Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on May 1st, 2019 at 610 in the Municipal Office buildings here in South Deerfield. Uh, we'd like to start our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just so everyone knows, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, since it's after, it's after 6.10 or almost 6.10, uh, we have a, <clears throat> a hearing scheduled for a, <clears throat> excuse me, all uh, alcohol liquor license for Leo's table, uh, Attorney Bodine and uh, Jennifer Howard, if you'd like to come up to the table. All right, I guess I should read this notice. The notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, that the Deerfield Select Board, acting as a local licensing authority, has received an application for a new annual on-premise restaurant all-like alcohol beverage license from the food, from food for Strength LLC, DBA, Leo's T Table, located at 55A North Main Street, South Deerfield. Total indoor area is 1,200 square feet with the proposed seating capacity of 30 and the proposed occupancy of 35. In accordance with the aforementioned provisions, the licensing authority of the said town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing in the main meeting room of the municipal offices building at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. on Wednesday, May 1st, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Hmm. Seems to be a little the conflict says, there, but the notice says 6:10. The yeah, proof I know. that I have. But well, anyway. this one says 6:30. Hmm. Um, well, what went in the paper was 6:10 because I have a copy of it. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe it was just. Then okay. just read that you're going to correct that. I think. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. I'll. Correct that. We might have to adjust this. All right. So. It's going. It will be at 6:10, and we'll just make this adjustment. It was posted in the newspaper for 6:10. Yes. That's so everyone should get. Okay. All right, go for Welcome. it. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so I'm uh, Christy Bodine, representing Jen Howard, who's the owner of uh, Food for Strength LLC, which is going to be DBA Leo's Table. And the, what, you, what was it? Kelly? Uh, Jerry's. Jerry's place. Okay. So she's um, working hard, getting the interior all built out and, and having close supervision by the building inspector, so everything's going well that way. So she's uh, looking for an all-alcohol on-premises license. Um, when I spoke to Pat Kroll earlier today, I had requested the hours be um, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. She's actually going to be open at 7. I don't know whether there's a restriction on the beginning hour for on-premises alcohol I service. It up, Christy. It's 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. So we'd like to request earliest possible until 11 p.m. She may not be using all of those hours. Initially, she's only going to be open for breakfast and lunch, but we wanted the license time period wide enough so that if she wanted to start dinner service, she'd be able to serve liquor um, during dinner hours as well. This is primarily a restaurant. Um, she'd like the option for all alcohol in case she wanted to do Bloody Marys at a brunch or, or cocktails um, at some other uh, times period, but this is not going to be, this is not a heavy alcohol restaurant. This is a food food restaurant primarily. Um, she's been, she started out cooking f prepared meals for people in their houses and then went into a commercial kitchen and she's been doing prepared meal um, pickup and delivery service with local ingredients, locally sourced healthy food. Really nice menu, really nice options. Um, I've eaten a number of her meals. So she's going to try to extend that concept into a restaurant, and then she'll continue, actually, with the prepared meal prep inside the kitchen of Leo. So she'll be using that as her commercial kitchen as well as a restaurant. Um, she's got a lot of food service experience, as you can see from her resume. She has tips training. I have a copy of her tips training card I can bring up to you. Thank you. That's my always my yep. main concern. If you have any questions, if there was anything in the application that's not clear, or if you want any other information. Uh, I, 
I guess my, I, only, my only question was that um, I was just surprised. This, I, I didn't realize there would be a liquor license going into that business. So it just got, caught me off guard because I, I just, in my mind, I had a different idea of what it would be. So I'm just curious to learn about your business and, and again, um, what you're thinking and why a full liquor license and not like beer and wine or something like that. And, how, and when, when, you, when do you plan to serve? What, what is your ideas? That's all. Uh, well, I actually brought a copy of the, the brief menu with me. Oh, but, nice. Um, a lot of why we wanted to apply for a full liquor now instead of just a beer and wine is if we're going to do it, we want to leave ourselves as much room to expand as we can. And we want, we don't want to be a bar, but right. we really want to appreciate like the local liquors that we have available, like Berkshire Brewing Dis uh, and uh, Berkshire Distillery. Um, we're going to be making um, soda water uh, via carbonators. So we want to be able to do like simple craft cocktails, like here's vodka soda with a house limeade. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, we have plenty of food to serve with it. Um, just an afternoon refresher, you know, when it's 70 degrees outside on a right. beautiful Saturday afternoon, being able to get a lemonade that has just a nice shot of a local vodka seems like it would be a nice fit for the town. So mm -hmm. we wanted to go ahead and say, hey, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to do it all the way. We're going to do it right. So and then it will leave us the option later to expand. If we want to do dinner service, we're set up to yeah. be able to do that as well. So. And what are your hours? What, what hours are you thinking now? And what were you thinking breakfast or not starting with breakfast or what's the? I am going to be breakfast and lunch. Um, okay. So I did. Um, we're going to be open right now. We're planning on seven thirty to three to be the primary operation hours. Um, we are going to be Monday through Saturday for actual cafes you're serving for right now. Because okay. as of right now, Sunday is going to be mainly for our meal prep operation, which um, we currently are in Amherst for. Um, we will possibly expand to Sunday later as everything's settled and time will tell. Um, but breakfast, lunch. That's yep. And possibly dinner in the future. Possibly dinner in the future. I'd give it at least, give me at least a year to get settled before I try and take on three dinner, uh, three understand. services. And, but and, and possibly Sunday brunch at some point. Yeah, there's, there's a depending. lot of room for expanding. That's mm -hmm. a lot of why we're moving to this building is so yeah. that we have all the opportunity we want to expand at a comfortable rate. Right. Is there a state requirement as to how early you can serve alcohol on Sundays? I, uh, if, if it's, it's noontime unless the municipality votes a local option. I don't know whether you have or not. There's a local option to know. have yeah. liquor service start on Sundays at 10 a.m., but I don't know whether Deerfield has adopted Actually, that or know. not. So we'll have to find out. Yeah. So, um, so I guess what, we, what she would be looking for, again, to give her the broadest possible set of options would be the earliest possible ser serving time until 11 p.m. Not that she's necessarily going to be using all those hours, but if she has them, then she's not going to run into a, an issue with having to come back and expand and, and change in the future. Yeah, I, I if mean, it's I okay with, I, we, we, yeah. I'd rather get the broadest possible permission to start with and then and let her kind um, of grow out. I but. don't have a problem, and if you come back and you want to do Sunday, we'll obviously we'll look into Sunday because, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't yeah, really I, know. I don't know either. Um, so... Um, if, if nobody has any other questions, I'll. I'll I, I, oh, question. I, first of all, I, I, I don't realize, I don't know, do we have a full license available? We do, yes, we do we have do. one. Yes. Okay. Yes. I looked into that. There's a few. And there aren't any beer and wine licenses. I think they're all, they're all yeah, taken. Well, there I knew is, that we had some yeah. conversations about not many available, and, and we had considered, you know, uh, you know, asking the state to increase it. So I just was unclear as to yeah. which you one's available. You have quite a few all alcohol licenses available right okay. now. Um, they, they tend to issue more of those by the quota than they do the on-premises beer and wine licenses. And as to the beer and wine on-premise, I think you might have one available, but you might have none available the last I, time I I don't checked. think we have any, yeah, actually. actually. Um, so I make a motion that we um, approve the liquor license um, from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, close the hearing first and then? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll Please. second that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you for coming in and good luck. Thank you so much <laughs> for hearing us. Good luck. We're excited, excitedly waiting. <laughs> okay, it's uh, 618 and we have a hearing from Eversource for a poll location for four polls on North Street. Uh, Nick's here from... 
Why don't you come on up, Nick? Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Nick Langoni. Nice to meet you. Hi. No, Nick, I, I, I really don't know where they are on North Street. Did, um, did, sure. Did you um, a, I have a drawing I can show you if you like. Oh, but, um, that would be great. It's right behind the, the Yankee Candle building there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's the um, customer that we're trying to service with this project. Yep. Okay. Um, so we're petitioning for four poles on North Street. So currently, that whole street is fed underground. There's a underground pad mount transformer um, that services Yankee Candle. And from that transformer, it goes across the street to feed Militech. And Yankee Candle is looking to um, increase their, their service. They're going to add... Originally, they wanted to add another transformer, an underground one, but due to the increase in load, um, it wouldn't be um, very viable to keep all that underground unless we expanded the project scope to create a loop, um, which would be a lot of construction. Um, so to increase reliability and keep costs down, it was uh, the engineering group decided that it'd be possible to convert this into an overhead span, mm. and that would both increase reliability by bringing it above ground so if there's an issue, it can be fixed immediately without digging up the street. Um, it'll also disconnect the service between one customer, Yankee Candle, and the second customer, Militech, because right now they're pretty much connected. If one goes down, the other will go down. Um, this will give them separate services as well, so it's kind of good for both customers. Are you, are you saying that the service to Militech will be overhead? Um, it, their service will be underground from a pole outside of their building now versus being fed um, from Yankee Candle. What side of the road will the poles be located? Um, the poles will be on the, on the westerly side, um, okay. three poles, with the final pole, uh, Miltex pole, being on the east side, closer to their building. Uh, my next question is for Kevin. Kevin, how wide is North Street? Is that a 50-foot a layout there? Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head exactly what the layout is, um, but I did go by. I took actually could I borrow that? Just sure. I think it's 35 feet. Do you have the? It would be. Uh, it looks like I'm about 34 feet because uh, basically what they're looking at is this from center line of North Street over to where the pole is. There's 17 feet, and then when you're going all the way down towards Refab, the very last right. pole yep. that will be on the eastern easterly side, um, that's 17 feet. So about 34 feet across. Um, I did go by because it is pre-marked. I've already looked at it briefly. Um, the stakes are there. I don't see any issues as far as uh, DPW is concerned. Um, the only question, obviously, is going to be when they're ready to go ahead and actually put the poles in because they're going to be right next to the fire hydrant that's right next to um, Refab, which is the one that's going to be feeding Militech, if I'm correct. My, my biggest concern is that... I. I mean, we, we try to keep stuff underground as much as we can. I mean, we're, I'd love to get rid of everything above ground, and here we are adding four more poles above ground when they, they're not right now. Um, I'm and really anxious to and get And on the west side of that street, they'd almost be in that uh, drainage gully. It is. It's right at the edge of the drainage ditch. Well, there's going to be four, four poles, you said, along there. Three, three westerly, one yes. easterly. diagram that has the poles in there, too. So one, do you have an actual map of where they're going to be located in reference to the uh, driveways for those properties? Um, for the driveways, I don't have an aerial image, but um, I don't think any of our stakes were close to the, the driveways. All right. The, the, first, the first pole, because you got, as you drive down, you got a driveway, a residential driveway. Yep. There's a small lawn area between right. that entrance yep. and the entrance into Yankee Candle, the first part. Yep. That is where the first pole first will go. Pole goes, yep. And then go another, because that's 180 feet off of Elm Street, center line is the first pole. Then I believe it's, what, 165? Yep, 160 to the second pole, 158 to, to the, the next third. Pole, and 77 to the last pole. But the last pole crosses the street. That is correct. Like this. Yeah. From what I saw. So... You're basically saying that all of the electricity on North Street is going to be now provided overhead, and it's just going to go down the pole to feed the current connections that exist for Militech and Yankee Candle. Essentially, yes. Hmm. What happens if we say no? 
Um, so this, the reason this project is underway is mostly to service um, the expanded capacity for Yankee Candle. Um, if this petition fails, then we'll have to find another way to get them power. Our, our first option was to keep it underground, but the project became so large in scope that it wasn't really feasible because once you have a certain amount of load underground and multiple transformers, um, for reliability purposes, we can no longer have what we call um, a radial feed, which is kind of like a one-way street. Once you get to a certain amount, you need to have what we call the loop, which is more like it's bilateral. There's two ways to get it. So if you lose your feed on one end, you can back feed from the other end. And that's just not the way that the existing conditions were set up. You know, these, these are, this is an old area. This is what we got. Um, I'm not sure if maybe one building was owned by um, another, and that's why it's set up like this. But now, because there's two customers coming off of this one, mm. this one feed, um, we're kind of stuck with that. So it would be a substantial redesign to try to get this all underground. that um yeah I, I hate to see them go overhead too and, I, and i'm a little concerned because i know that the water mains over there and that drainage is there and that's not that wide am, am i mistaken kevin to think that that's only about 12 feet from the edge of the blacktop over to the fence for yankee candles property with that drainage swale in between so actually should be a little more because it's folding 17 feet from the center line of north street to where the pole would be correct and then from the pole to the fence, ballpark guess, just kind of trying to visualize it by about maybe another eight to 10 feet. Yeah, so so that pole would almost be right in that drainage ditch though. It would, it's right on the edge. Yeah. I, I guess I'd like you to think about it some more and, and see if you could come up with some other design. I mean, I understand that there are constraints, but um, I mean, just visually, going overhead, I have uh, it really is painful for me. Yeah, I understand that. Well, we didn't want to go overhead if possible either, but right. it's kind of the only way for us to, you know, meet the demands of the customer at this point, um, without radically driving up their costs. Because this is this is all going to fall on them. So I'm not sure if they're going to continue on this avenue if the costs skyrocket. Because I don't know. I'll, I'll have to talk to them, but this is probably the most affordable and reliable option for them at this point. Is um, how, what's the posting on this? Do we, can we post this for next week? Because we are going to. I'd love a little more time to look yeah. at that then. I, I, and, I, see, and to see what the other, what the other plan is. I mean, if yeah, you, I, I would like you to look at it. Is, sure, sure. You know, could you look at it again and, and, and what's the posting on this, Diana? Can we do a continuance for next week? <clears throat> I, I think would think so, so yeah. yeah. If you, you can't, you've opened a public hearing right. at this point. I mean, I've never actually had one, a poll hearing continued, but I would assume that you can continue it. Well, um, I, I mean, I just hate to see this go overhead. I, I, I feel like... Even, even though it's a non-residential area? Yeah, well, every, every person in Deerfield drives through there. Wow. You know, drives by. Kind okay. Of, um, the poles know? on Elm Street are all overhead there as well. I yeah. know. Right. We and we, we would love to have them go yeah, underground. underground. Exactly our point. The whole I mean, idea is to get rid of all this stuff. I, 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 if you look at our, our downtown, I mean, uh, for wreck. years, it's, it, you know, I would love to get us to go underground. So to put more poles up, it's just, I don't know. I have a huge problem with it. Okay. Um, so maybe Excellent. you could think about it and come back and. We can um, talk we about can, it some more, and we can, we can talk about, about it. I think I think you should um, keep yes. the hearing open, and you right. should um, take it under advisement and right. do some research into what yeah. your, um, uh, you know, what you can do, what you um, legally, Who, you know, can do, and ask manager? them to do. Uh, Nick Kriegel. Nick Kriegel. Is pro yeah. I, I mean, for for the project over there, or is it your uh, your project manager is Nick Kriegel? Our project manager for this is Nick Kriegel. And it's from EverSource, correct? Yeah. I wonder if we could talk with both, both of them and see. Right, yeah, like a meeting with them and see. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. get a meeting with, with your, you know, the project manager and the project manager of Yankee. Yeah, I mean, I've been on all the meetings on this, so I can probably answer any question you have. But um, if you want me to come back with a Plan B, I mean, we had discussed that earlier. That was the original plan. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, when we're talking about crossing parcel lines, possibly crossing a railroad, it just 
it became really complicated really quickly. Mm -hmm. And this seemed like the, uh, the simplest option. So. so are you saying the power does not come down North Street off of Elm? It comes across the railroad tracks? Um, if I could show this drawing can real you, quick. Can you yes, yeah, come please. Up, please. I thought please, we had some in the packet I that I... Here to look at, so. I don't think we had that drawing, though. See this one, this one with the fish in it. But um, so this is off of our GIS here. Mm -hmm. So this is Elm Street, North yep. Street, with the candle, Militech. Um, now this green line is the existing utility. It doesn't actually go under the building. It more likely just goes like this. Um, and then it hits this transformer, and then it comes across street, and hits their transformer. So that means if there's an outage here, yep. they both go down. So they don't, I'm just curious why they don't know where that exact line goes. That's more of like a, a GIS question. It's uh, our system of record uses one set of coordinates and then the base map uses another. So sometimes there's a disconnect. Also when we draw these sometimes because of the scaling issues, you can't get them exactly where you want. Um, so don't use this as a, like a scale drawing. It's more of a reference. Right. But um, so if we were to try to keep this underground, mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, we would need to create a loop because the demand is increasing which means that problem that I just said, where if we go down here, they both go down, by creating a loop, if I can borrow that. Yeah, sure, sure. Say, for example, we are able to come back down here, we come back down this street, mm -hmm. now it's a circle. So if you lose here, you, you can, can come this right from there. So why so, couldn't you just continue right down to this point, and then you can feed both of them? Then you'd have your loop right there. Like continue, this, so we're this underground, underground. It currently goes down. But go down right, right along the side of the road there. So one option we had right now is to put a splice pit here and have one go this way and one go this way. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe the engineer did not like that because it doesn't really, you, st you still kind of have the same problem where if you lose it here, you're still gonna lose both customers. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's kind of the nature of a, how a radial electric design works. Mm -hmm. um, when you have large customers with a lot of load, we like to develop these loops because you can keep them both up and we don't want to lose customers. And you couldn't run two loops down, one there, one there? Is that too redundant? Um, and instead of running it all the way around. So if we, if we did that, if we, if we gave one service here and one mm -hmm. here, yeah. um, this customer would have to pick up all the construction costs for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure they want to do that because that would be exorbitant. So pretty much, um, Yankee Candle is on the hook for if they lose power due to construction, any construction needs they need because they're upgrading, that, that falls on this customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, what I mean, get thought without digging too much into the history is yeah. I think that this customer actually used to own this, no. and they downsized no. and Yankee Candle bought this. That's no. what we no. No, it was the elders lumber. This was a lumber company, and this yeah. business was here prior to that, anyways. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not sure how that elders setup must have done it got that way, and I'm, I'm sure that the power doesn't go under that building. No, no, no. You know. it, uh, um, so it goes like this, and then it comes across here. Exactly. And then it does this? Well, I, yeah, and then that's why I don't understand why it can't just be brought to a point and just go in both directions. And, and, and so I was listening to you explain. I thought you were saying that the load was so great that it wouldn't fit, with the, the, the existing wires were too small and that that's where the problem lied instead of creating the loop. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you could look at it again. Sure, so. Because um, we don't really want to go overhead. Okay. I mean, that's really, from a visual point of view. And you know, we, like I said, we already have so many poles downtown and we really want them underground anyway. I mean, right. We've, any time that we've, thought we were going to do something, we, the whole point was to get them underground. So to, to okay above ground right now is, you know, I just hate to do that. All right, well, I can go back yeah. to, um, when I get into work tomorrow, I can talk to some people and or, maybe or, get some numbers just, to see. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. what the financial impact would be yeah. right. for, both, for both options. For what, you know what you're proposing and what, or, what or could you root it out from it. another place from a, you know from another? The only, it have the to only other feed that we saw was right. I believe up here out of picture. There's yep. some overhead. Yep. Um, fed from I think there's some residential. Yes. Up here. Mm -hmm. We can look at some other options. Um, 
I'd this, really this appreciate This definitely be the cheapest for the customer. Yeah, because the other way, you, you have there's wetlands over there, and the distance would be so great that would create other issues for you. All right, well, here's what well, I can what, do next who time. Feeds, um, who feeds uh, the machine shop all the way down there? It, I don't know. They must pick up from here somewhere. Or does it? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. Yeah, there's, there's another, like another machine there's shop. There's another pull line that ends, like, right here yep. with, um, with the transformer. Mm -hmm. That's the machine shop, I think. That's the whatever it's called. No, or refab. refab. The welding, the welding, welding shop. The welding shop. I just didn't know where they get theirs from, if that's separate from these two. I think could, it, could, could they get pulled from that? And then you could just cut it off on the other side. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm sure you guys have all looked at that, but I, I, well, I'm just curious about the financial impact of that. Sure. Um, um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a solid no on doing this. I just want a little more information. Absolutely. Um, so I can come back and... Um, I'm pretty much a no. Some figures. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I yet. I got that. But, but I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to the candle as well. Yeah. Um, see what their limits are here. Right. I'd just like to know, uh, you know, let them know our, our wish would be to have it underground. And, and uh, you know, I would just like to know the financial impact of both plans if there's any other way to pull it, Militech from that other pole. Or other, you know. Something else other than yeah. the, the large loop. But you know, just, I'm not an electrical. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like it's more complicated this way. Hmm. Um, it's easy, but it's more complicated. And it, you know, maybe there's another place you can pull it off. Yeah, this kind of goes back to just our, our engineering standards and the right. fact that um, what you want for load on there. The amount of load on this underground line is going to require a loop. It just will, no matter what, even if you separate the two. Yeah. Like pull the other one from uh, the machine shop or whatever it's called. <laughs> Well, I would really appreciate it if you could just keep looking at it. We'll get, we'll get around the look. Thank and then you. would you get back to us soon? Like when do you I think, how much work. How much time do you think? Because I think we have to schedule it for a date certain in the future if we're going to um, schedule it. Well, next week, next week we have I don't think uh, next week's going to be we enough time. Right? For them, in. you mean? We have a permit Yeah, for them. In. No, no, I'm thinking for him. I'm, I'm asking, is it Nick? I'm asking you, what do you, I'm sorry, what do you think for time-wise? What do you think you need? I don't want to put it back on just to have, I mean, we can just continue it, but I, I think know. we should just try to find out from you. What do you think you need to go uh, back? I don't and, want to delay the customer too right, long, so right. I'm assuming the better. Okay. I don't want to All right. Get this uh, All right. So next week? Do you, okay, you do you think you can do it for next week? week? To get us some data on that, that'd be yeah, great. We could work that out. Okay. okay. All right. And even before, if you could, you know, any info you Diana, want. Diana, we were going to have Atlas. We could well, do Atlas. Absolutely, but we're going to have Excuse one me. next Wednesday. Um, yeah, we have, um, we were going to have kind of, we, it isn't a regular meeting that we were going to have kind of a special meeting, but we could schedule it. But yeah, we would do it, have to do it to a date, a time certain. So the only issue is there is another activity going on right. in this room mm -hmm. from five, it's scheduled from five to seven or at least right. five to so six we thirty. So, seven. yeah, so we'd have to probably go to like seven or seven fifteen. Seven well, I think I was going to have Atlas come in at 7.15 so they didn't have to come in the following week. So if you wanted to come in at 7.30? I do have a, another poll petition in Hadley next Wednesday at 7. Yeah. Oh. But that doesn't mean that someone can't come. Nick Kriegel might be able to come off okay. the and, um, and, and maybe somebody can cover mine and I can come back. And even if you had any info before that that could get dropped off and we could look at it during the week. Um, okay, sure. You know, I don't know how quick it would take you to do that stuff, but really I'm looking at the financial impact of, of both plans and um, mm -hmm. if there's any other way to pull that off of there. I'm sure you've looked at it and there isn't, but you know, we're really hesitant to put that stuff in the air again, but. Um. I'm very hesitant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, at this point, it's what the, um, what the customer is wanting to pay for. So. Understood. Yeah, I, I, I understand, understand that too. I'm, I'm, I certainly don't want to be penalized um, Deerfield businesses, but this is long term. This is forever. Because once it goes ab above ground, it's never going to go underground again. What drives the costs being so expensive going underground versus overhead? I mean, it's just. Um, the, the trenching cost primarily. Is that right? It's not really that much. I do a lot of trenching, so I can't imagine it's that expensive. In, in addition to, if you look at the linear distance there of that overhead pole line yep. versus. Um, the loop, which could be, you know, potentially four times as long, those costs add up substantially. 
Also, from a, from a legal perspective, um, this loop is going to require potential easements. Mm -hmm. There's multiple property lines that we're probably going to have to cross. So the red tape um, aspect is significant there versus the well, you do, you pole line. Even when you run overhead, you need to you, you need to get easements from property owners. But other than uh, the typically, town. we stay in the, the town. The towns right away. The town taking to avoid that. But when you do that ditching, can't you? I mean, I don't know. Is there a, a code requirement that how far apart the lines meet? Can't you have one line going this way and the other one coming back to create your loop but be in the same ditch? I mean, if you're going to run off. Of, the wires from Elm Street and go down the poles, you're going to make one connection there. Oh, you mean like have like a... Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like a yeah. wide trench and just kind of go out and back? Yeah. Or what, what... Yeah, I was wondering, so how can you do it airily and why would why would you have to do a loop if it goes underground? And again, this is, might be more than... I, I just don't know technically. Uh, could you repeat that? Sorry. So you can do it above ground by just going down... Yes, yeah, just, just by going down here, you can do this all in the air. You don't have to loop around. Right, so but in the ground, so you the have plan, to look around. The plan here was to, on this pole, mm -hmm. it's going to come underground. Gotcha. It's going to go another pole and go underground here. To them. Yep, gotcha. And so that isn't a loop because our overhead standards don't require anything like so that. So it's anything underground requires that. Right, because if something happens here above ground, you can it's, they can come out and fix it. Right. You know, no problem. Yep. Um, but if it's underground, it's a lot more work to fix. You got to pull cable, you got to dig. Mm -hmm. Well, don't they require tubing anyways? Yeah, and it, it's, if it's conduit. sleeve in the conduit, so if it's not that great of a distance, you could pull new wires if you had a failure. I mean, I'm... Yeah, typically they have extra conduit there. You go yeah. for that purpose, just yeah. in case right. the wire burns up in the conduit. They have yep. a spare one, sure. so it's already to good to go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, why don't you uh, check into it and get back to us. Um, quickly, I just have to think about sure. this. So when you were talking about coming down and back up, yep. um, one of the problems there is the structure of the riser, which is the mechanism that goes from overhead to underground. Yep. Um, that is such a device that you can only really have one on a pole because it's massive. Okay. Um, so you couldn't have them both on one pole. We'd have to right. probably have another pole over here to come down one, go down three, come back, come up the other. How gotcha. big are they? I got gotcha. you. I mean, aren't they only around six inches? No. Well, it's a size of a cross arm with cutouts, so it's, oh. there's an eight foot structure on there that kind of reduces it into a conduit that goes underground. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. And those have protective fuses on them as yep. well. Yep, So it's a lot bigger. You definitely need two poles. I see yeah, you have to, our, our, um, our standards book says we can only have one. We don't like to put multiple uh, pieces of equipment on poles. Right, right. So there's something for us to think about because, you know, in trying to save three poles visually down North Street, now we're going to have two, two poles gigantic. on Elm Street that are bigger with big apparatus on it. And right now, they, uh, is there a pole that could st Where does it start from? Does it start underground? Um, on this pole here, yep. this pole... 89 over yep. Yep. That's a, a Verizon set pole, so they'd have, they'd begin with this proposal. They'd have to actually increase the size of that pole to accommodate our riser. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but right now, does the uh, the how, it goes underground from just from this pole? Yes. Okay. okay. There's okay. already a riser on that pole. I gotcha. Well, I'll just take a look at that. Then. Well, sure. yeah. yeah, and just look from the surrounding area. Maybe you'd be able to. Pull in from a surrounding area for one one side or the other. Yeah, we can we can look at um, some other options, see what we can come up with. And, yeah, thank you. Okay. Financial okay. All right. Yeah. So why don't we continue this uh, public yeah. hearing until next uh, Wednesday, which is the May eighth at, at seven, 7 15. ten or seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. Sure. Okay. All right. And you want to just take a vote on that, please? Yeah. Make a motion to. Extend it to May 8th at 7.15. I second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Contact info. Do you think I have a card? That's okay. It's, is, I think we have it, Nick, in the, in, the, Do we have it? in the application, don't we, somewhere? I don't know. Oh, it's Tom. This is this one here. 
It's like it's it's right there, I think. Plus, the, there's this maps you were looking for before when you couldn't okay. find them, and they're in that and purple them. folder. Four one three. Yep. Four seven eight. Zero eight. Your last name? Lingo. L-A-N. Thank you. Thank so you. We're looking at potentially um, next Monday at seven o'clock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll. we'll no, um, you see, oh. You said uh, that seven, I think we should do it seven thirty because seven fifteen. I think we just said you just continue to seven fifteen. Yeah. Okay. I think well, that should work. Well, he said he has a. If you could, if he was happy at seven, then? he could come back here for seven thirty. Because it's, it's not going to make. Gonna be happy at 7. Right. It's not going to make a difference if we do seven fifteen or seven thirty for your Hadley situation, is it? No. Okay. All right. So seven fifteen. Okay. Yeah. And um, I'll have Pat get in touch just to confirm we're all good on process. Great. All right. Next on the agenda, we have. Um, thank you. Thank you. We have a public hearing for Deerfield Natural Special Permit hearing for medical marijuana cultivation. Ms. Lesser, Mr. Watkins, come on up. There's his. Uh, thank you for coming. Sorry, we're a little few minutes late. No problem. Okay, I'll read this. Uh, Notice of a hearing. The Select Board of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on May 1st, 2019 at 7.35 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield on an application of Deerfield Naturals LLC in accordance with Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Article 4, 4 Section 4650, Medical Marijuana Treatment Centers, and 4660 marijuana establishments. Deerfield Naturals requests a special permit for marijuana cultivations and medical uh, purposes from the Select Board Marijuana Cultivations fa uh, Facility, um, 18,621 18, square feet to be located at 10 Greenfield Road in South Deerfield. Um, is the time for this hearing proper? Uh, it should, I, I believe all the publishing was, pu we had a, a change of the schedule, but we published after, I believe. Okay. So what well, did you? Well, because my agenda says 635, which makes us okay, but oh, the yeah. public hearing says 735, which makes us not okay. Ugh. Did you get a copy of the notice by any chance? Because I don't know why we would have put it. It says 735 as well. Yeah. I yeah. did. Hold on. Well, that's, we might just have to hold those 735. I'm sure we'll still be here. <laughs> oh. Sorry, guys. We had to readjust the schedule because a couple of hearings came up that um, had to be done quickly. And yours we scheduled, I think, first. I'm not sure why we scheduled it so late, but it was scheduled quite a while ago, I thought. Did it get posted Do, at seven, 6.35 or 7.35? It is 7.35. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, to be safe, we best make you wait. Yep. Not a problem. Sorry. Okay. I'm really so, sorry. It's okay. So let's move on to the next thing. Uh, decisions. Discussion decisions. And I'm, uh, oh, no. We, um, let's do um, Chris. Chris is here, and he came here at 6, so we could do him. Did I miss him? Yep. Right here. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, it's not technically a hearing. It's yep. just a scheduled appointment. Hi. Great. How are you? Doing well. Good. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm, I think it's a beautiful awesome. sign, and Kevin said he has no trouble um, where you're going to place it. Um, from a snow, the only thing I would worry about is snow plowing. Kevin said there was no issues with the snow plowing, so um, it's a lovely, a lovely thing to do. I, I just can't. It's very nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is kind of a takeoff of the street sign project where um, John Sis yeah. and others envisioned that there would be more history added to yeah. tell more biographical and and uh, this tells both the history in connected to the whopping section of Deerfield, but also the military history part of it too, including quotes from his uh, 
that he the last letter to his mother as well as a special bronze star that he received in Normandy in France. Um, the issue that's unique about what, what, uh, Child's Crossroad and Wapping is that the stop signs and the street signs are far, far back from the main intersecting roads. So that affords us the opportunity to get it up in the air so that people can see it's there mm -hmm. and to get it above where the snow plow and the pile probably would be. I went there a couple months ago and saw that there was about three feet of snow at the peak. Um, but unfortunately, you know, I told John Sis this, it's not gonna be possible to do this elsewhere in most of the streets because the signs are right close to the intersection and it would be a visibility issue. But Kevin and I went down there and actually took photos and mm -hmm. verified it. I mean, the concern I have is if somebody does have an objection to this down the road, doing this in bronze from the get-go is very expensive. It's the most durable, but it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I actually have um, vendors at Fort Bragg down in North Carolina looking at other things that would look good, but that might be cheaper to begin with to see that if it's acceptable to the community over time, I can then go back and replace it with bronze because tens of thousands of dollars, you know, that could be kind of, you know, spent and then have somebody say they object to it and want it down or whatever. So that was, I haven't got that information back of looking for alternative materials that are aesthetically equal, but I believe that the size here that was given to me is because of the the casting process for the bronze to get this type of verbiage, you have to go to this 32 by 36. Well, I think it's lovely, and I, I think it's really nice that we have that kind of history. And it would be wonderful to have it up before, um, I mean, it is the 75th this year, but it would be nice to have it up for our 350th as well, so. Yeah, I mean, the idea of, you know, I thought about you have June 6th as key date this year. His birthday is Ju July 12th. But then um, I thought the 75th anniversary of the death was probably better because the schools would be in session and we could have a dedication that involved Deerfield Academy and the yeah. high school. Um, also, I still have comrades of his that are alive and pretty, in pretty good health. That oh. I'll see one tomorrow, for instance, in Chicago. And um, so the issue is I could get maybe one or two of them to come back here and to actually speak, but I think in the middle of the summer, it's too hot for 96-year-olds, 97-year-olds to be a speaking. September can be pretty hot. Yeah, but it's, it's <laughs> yes. better, you know, yes. from come up from North Carolina, it would be okay. Yeah. But I can't guarantee that because it's, you know, at that age, there's no, but that's the idea is to make it into something for the community that would be a good dedication. I think that would be lovely. It's also my Mr. birthday. Are you, are you related to this man? At all? Yeah, so he's my uncle. He's your uncle. I mean, obviously I never knew him, but my mother was a child. She was the last child in Deerfield when she died last year. So she was eighth generation. And so this was her favorite brother, about 10 years older than her. Well, I think it's a lovely thing. Um, I guess we should vote to make sure that before you do anything that um, it's really okay. So I would make the motion that we approve um, the um, citing of this as proposed. I gladly second that. Yes, I as well. Um, is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. I think it's yeah. aye. Thanks. And I'll come back to you if there's an alternative material approach first, this it's first fine. phase, and get yeah. your approval for that before anything. I mean, starts. I certainly understand that. So. Yeah. It's just, it's very, very lovely, and I think it's really great, and I, you know, we should be able to do something. How would, the, how would they do the bronzing if they, you know, would the photo be on there? Or yeah, the, it would be actually uh, elevated. It would be, it, it would be, um, you know, when they do these bronze things, the lettering yeah. pops out. Well, yes. same with the photo. Oh, wow. That's a high-res photo that I did from an original. Some of the things it's you it's can... a 1943 photo. The vendors you're speaking to, they I've seen signs similar to that where it's made out of a heavy aluminum yeah. and that there's actually a very good vinyl decal that's applied to that. And boy, you walk up to them and it, it, it just is so nice and it lasts, you know, they won't last like bronze, but it would last for 25 years and it'd be really good. That might be a, a less expensive choice. Yeah, and then it might be, 
it's possible it makes it more affordable to do at both ends of the street. Yeah, right. It's, it's a pretty big risk to do bronze at both ends yeah, if yeah. something is off. Oh, I understand. So but I'm going to look at, at that option, exactly what uh, Henry was saying. That would be really nice, whatever you do. I think it's lovely. It's very Great. nice. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for Thank trying you. to do this. Yeah, you bet. It's going to be great. Have a nice evening, and it was nice to meet you in person. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. I like when people do that type of thing to, yeah, me too. to yeah. remember it's you know, family members and, and stuff like that. I, so too. I think it's wonderful. Okay. Um, Plenty of time to read. Wares. You have plenty of time now yeah. to yep. read Can those read? minutes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well let's go through confusion. our decision things and then. Um, okay, do you sure. want to do that, Trevor? What's that, sure. You want to just go through these decision things? And, okay, um, uh, fiscal year 19, the public wares appointment. Mm -hmm. Sean Barberio from yes. All States Material Group. Yep. yep. I make a motion that we appoint him. Is this for just through fiscal 19 or is this for the coming year? Uh, this is uh, for term beginning. This is just somebody uh, taking a term beginning May 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2019. It's just oh, a okay, just a months. temporary it's a fill okay. in for. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, fine. You do that in a little bit, right? Usually yeah, because this is not. May, yeah, you'll do your annual appointments coming yeah. up in the next okay. couple okay. meetings. So I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I make a motion that we appoint the poll workers. Um, you want to read those? Yeah. Can I do that? Or do you oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. We, we, the selectmen oh, of the town of Deerfield, okay. by virtue of authority vested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint the following as poll workers for the term beginning May 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2019. Andreol, Bonnie, Bardos, Cheryl, Barron, Teresa, Easton, Lee, Kolokoski, Diane, Kostik, Margaret, Lino, William, Magalinski, Cynthia, McCormick, Nathaniel, um, I may have that wrong. Is that right, Nathaniel? Um, Morrow, Carol, Morrissey, Irene, Patterson, Shirley, Pachette, Mark, uh, Podlesny, Eleanor, Sacco, Sophie, uh, Sadowski, Nan, Stakarski, Mary, Stakarski, Stanley, Telega, Margaret, Risley, Jane, Gilbert, Keith, Jane. Natalie. I think it's Natalie. Is it Natalie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Natalie. Thank Natalie. you. Um, I second that. <laughs> okay. All the, oh. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have anybody coming in for the um, one day liquor license? Well, we just had the gentleman here, but he had to leave to go to another uh, meeting. So he was, he was representing the uh, Beer Guy LLC. But otherwise, no, we do not. Um, uh, what, what? Don't. So you what have about a, the, the beer guy? We don't have one. Some of you them? do. You have a packet. It was like a little. Um, it was all. Yeah, it's right there. It was all packed together. So I left it there for you. So he just had his card. So this is actually going to be at um, the location of Damn Yankees Barbecue, but it's being yep. hosted by I think the beer guy LLC yeah, is like a beer truck. Is yeah, my he's understanding. very reasonable. We had yep. him for a a, a business. Um, function and very safe, really good. He is yeah, very good. safe. Okay. Really knew what he was doing and um, just very attentive. It's only him, you know, at least that was there at the time. Um, but so yeah, you know yeah, very comfortable with him. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, then I make a motion we approve this. Question. I'll second. Uh, okay. Discussion. Uh, the discussion is. Uh, I, I asked Diana earlier, and I thought we had some discussion at some point about one day liquor licenses that weren't going to be. For uh, a, a fundraiser or a nonprofit organization where people came here and, and it was for profit because you know they pay a small amount for
for these permits when we have people who pay thousands of dollars for them and it's a sort of a competing thing. And I, I, maybe I'm just way off, but if I don't spark anybody's memory, memory then maybe I dreamt it, I don't know. Uh, what what, well, what we was were, your point again? What, what you mean well, to charge I think more than what we charge? No, no, I, or, I think that I well, thought, if it becomes a regular thing, I guess yeah. I have a problem with it too. Right. Right. Well, there's there's parameters in the law. So, right. for a, a one day or what they call special license, you can't do it more than thirty times a year. Right. Um, there are parameters for nonprofit and prof and, and for profit. For profit can only get beer and wine. Um, nonprofit can get all alcohol. So I'm not sure, Kip, that you okay. that the town can put additional. Oh, I, I don't parameters know that we did. That, but I, that's, I just yeah, I you remembered were just a conversation about, about, right. about it. What you did well, say. Well, what, what you did say is that for the special events and things, what or what we were trying to put in place is asking people to at least give us 30 days notice right. when they needed yeah. to come in front of the board because okay. this is part of our scheduling kerfuffle is we right. have these folks that need these one days and all of a sudden they're just showing up like last right. week and they need them, you know, pronto. So there are events coming up. So. Um, we asked for 30 days. We need to know that the chief has looked at these things. We need to know that Kevin has looked at these things because these are parking, sometimes leading to parking issues, um, know. you know, on public roads and, and things. So yep. um, and Pat and I are talking about that. getting a form prepared, an application form where they would give us this information. It would have a sign off by Public Works, a sign off by the chief, and any other applicable you know, Board of Health, mm -hmm. if necessary. Um, you know, we're getting more and more approach for events and yeah. such, and we need to be more organized in our response. So those are the discussions. So we, that's, you know, the, the 30 days anyway is what we're really trying to at least get enough notice to be, you know, to be able to be proactive oh, in these stamp. responses. Do you want us to mm -hmm. sign this or do you want to stamp? No, you can go ahead and sign it. It's, oh, okay. it's okay. ready. Um, um. All right, so we have in, a motion. In both a places, second. to yep. top um, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Diana, if you yeah. could definitely pursue organizing it so that we see them a little bit before. I mean, this this is May 5th, so. Yeah, I mean, this that's, is like, that's what I'm that's saying. What that's yeah. exactly yeah. what I'm We're saying. And, 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 and these are annual. So, well, these, these, these are not, but some effect. of them that we are getting are annual. So right. these folks know that the events are coming. So there's no reason why we can't be getting a little bit more notice the from them. On the two there in front of us tonight, we don't have any input from the police department. Not that I'm aware of. No, okay. no, not that I'm... Uh, I don't know if it's Yankee Candle, right? Yeah, I uh, think Yankee Candle. This is a standard event that they've right. done. I'm yeah. sure it's not going to be an issue. Yep, um, hard whip again, which they always use. Yep. Right. It's fine. And um, no, I think Do we should make a motion for that. I'm trying to verify with this. I make a motion to approve the one-day liquor license for uh, Yankee Candle Village uh, for uh, Hardwick winery selling wine by the glass um it's a girls night out event at yankee candle village um 6 to 9 p.m and the date is may 9th. 9th may 9th i'll second that is there any further discussion nope. all those in favor aye, aye. okay yes. and, we'll, and we'll notify the the police and of course yep. kevin knows but we'll let we'll let the chief know as well um the I understand too. He wasn't he wasn't able to stay, but I I understand there might be an, an application for a seasonal license for damn Yankees to do something like this on a more regular basis. So that's a regular license process. If they did come forward with that application, just so you know. Do you have the oh, I do. I'm sorry, for girls. Yeah, that's it. This is Yankees. Okay. Yep. Um, thank you. Diane, is, yes. was there any changes to the street street um, yes. policy? Yes, there was. I want to point that out to you, and I, I just uh, let Kevin have a copy, and hopefully he's had a chance to look at it. The only thing that's changed since the last time you looked at it, which was on November 28th and you had a public hearing, is the last paragraph above your signatures. Um, if you remember, the consultant that we had um, looking at it uh, through Ty and Bond had done a, a draft grading of the policy. It will be graded by DOT, and the grade that we get 
um, helps you be more competitive in your um, in your funding application. So, and you have to have a minimum grade of 80 points to even be eligible for funding. Um, so we graded it, I think it well above 80. I think it was almost near, it was up about 90. Um, but what he had noted is that we didn't have any <coughs> performance measurements. And now DOT was looking for some type of performance measurements. So I had added the last paragraph um, saying that we would it would just be evaluated annually by the town administrator in conjunction with the public works superintendent council on aging slash healthy aging healthy advisory committee the ada coordinator and other relevant officials the findings of which shall be reported to the select board and to the town through its annual town report performance measures shall consider infrastructure improvements including but not limited to total miles of bicycle accommodations linear feet of sidewalk added number of crosswalks curb ramps upgraded improved and made and made ADA compliant. Go closures of any gaps in pedestrian bicycle network and upgrades to transit facilities. Other factors such as increased public transit ridership and increased public participation in bicycle pedestrian systems will also be considered. So it would just be basically a, it's not like we're gonna grade ourselves, and but it's more just to say, this is the things that we've done and celebrate that success and then look at further opportunities to continue to improve. There isn't any contradiction that I can see right off but um you know the M mvp program that we um are going to do the green infrastructure and um you know filtration um boxes and all that kind of stuff there's no nothing in here that would be a contradiction or a problem would it i don't believe so I, I'm just and and also quickly. there is something in your exceptions you know there's always going to be an exception that says you know if a site conditions render implementation infeasible so and or or the cost or impacts of accommodation is excessively disproportionate in other words if you can't really afford it if it's not um, you know, going to be okay. worth the future use of it. So there's, it's not that it's going to be an absolute. It's just that every time we do a project, we're supposed to look at it and evaluate it to see in the context of that project whether it makes sense to do these okay. things. No, that's fine. I just, I, I, I didn't think it was my fault. I didn't think um, to pull this out and look at the MVP application and the, uh, mm -hmm. <sighs> and this. But I, I, I just glancing at it quickly I don't think there is anything that is contradictory or is a problem no I think this yeah I don't, I, I don't think so but and just looking at it really Kevin, quickly did you, again what did, did you think that last paragraph is okay or okay thank you okay I'm uh, um, I make a motion we approve this and forward it to um, DOT Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So um, how does this impact our, the timeline for us getting the grants to start down here? Well, we already have the funding mm -hmm. for the prioritization plan. So this was just a requirement. We got conditional approval already based on getting this submitted by May 22nd. So now that you've this approved it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, that's just the signature page. Um, so once you sign that tonight, Carolyn, I'll just scan it, and it just goes into a portal online. So it'll be up, it'll be posted tomorrow. Yeah, so we're in. Right, and then yes, and we've already stuff. started working, um, you know, a little bit with Vinode on that, but it's just been okay. a lot just to get past town meeting and stuff like that. But yes. Well, yeah. No, yeah. I just wanted to make we're sure right we were on track, moving. Though. Yeah, we yep. were moving along in that. Um, and again, it's going to work out great. It's going to work really, it's going to be working along concurrently uh, initially with our healthy aging, you know, launch too. So I think it's really going to be a great, healthy great aging. timing. Okay. Next item is the building commissioner hiring process. Do you, you said you spoke with Bob. I did. I met him um, yesterday, the day before, maybe Monday, the day I before. He came in and, because uh, I had been calling to get a, um, uh, a meeting with him and to try and set up a, an interview and um, see if he dropped off an application. And I think Dick talked to me because yeah. I talked to Dick. And uh, so he dropped off an application. I got a chance to meet him. He was a little bit in a hurry. So I didn't, um, we didn't go into depth conversation, but um, we put something on the schedule for, is it the 7th? Tuesday. Tuesday the 7th at 5 to have a well, interview. I, I did interview him with Dick. Mm -hmm. And I, it was my 
thought that the board agreed that I would do this with Dick several weeks ago, mm -hmm. and, and I did meet with him, but I knew that you wanted to speak with him, so I do. Um, I, I, I did postpone it, but I, I'd really like to get him on board, because Dick's really, you know, he's struggling. I was in there today, he had 37 phone calls to get, get out, you know. Yeah. Uh, we've been getting some complaints, so, and I'm not surprised, but. Yeah. If he, I mean, I don't know, he's, he's well qualified, he's, he's an inspector at Goshen, he's been there for quite a while, he's willing to take the position for the money that uh, we have available. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, know, I'm think? anxious to, to interview him and then see how that so comes out. You would, if you interviewed him on Tuesday and, and everything goes fine, we could appoint him on the 8th? Uh, I would, yeah, I would think so. I mean, if I'd like to interview him and get to know him as I did the other person, and and you know okay. check his references you did and the all that check stuff. Already? Yeah. Did you have the background check? Okay. So, all right. I'm okay if we if we make a commitment to you know move forward on next week because yeah. I mean Dick seriously needs this. And you don't feel comfortable doing it tonight? No. no well, I you don't. guys did put me in charge of doing it. And I, I, I don't feel comfortable. I, I'd want to interview the man first. Okay. No, that, I, I, I understand that, Trevor. But I also, um, I mean, we're, Dick has been doing this since July, so mm -hmm. I, I really want to make sure we're moving ahead. I he do too. He seems like a good guy. Um, but yeah, I want you to you, have the opportunity. I would I mean, love I the opportunity. I you have to have the opportunity to, to talk to him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next item under new business is review the engineering service proposal received from DPC on the clarifier project. Diana, I want to say thank you for getting that um, certification vote down to um, USDA. Yes, yeah. well, thank you. Kip, Kip reminded me of that, so thank you, Kip. Just, um, Not a big deal. Get that going. Um, I guess my first question is mm -hmm. uh, why aren't we getting more than one uh, bid on this? Does anybody know? Or? I feel comfortable with it, and I and I, uh, but I do want to negotiate the price. You, you want to what? I want to negotiate the price down. Well, right. I, I mean, I. This is the first time I've seen this. Right. But right off the bat, I I don't like this lump sum fee basis. I mean, this town has been burned for tens of thousands of dollars. In well, this meaning exact language. Those I think the lump words. sum is is uh, if you read further, he you know as he does a task, he then bills us for the task. Um, so it's not okay. we're not paying them all up front that then he needs to change that language well it does it says it here um, Go ahead. and DPC will invoice the town of Deerfield monthly based on the level of effort by phase in the event the scope work is modified increase or decrease for any reason the scope and fee for the work will be mutually revised by amendment we're, we're, okay I think that's that next, here yeah okay, that next page that. Yeah. so yeah, I didn't. I was like, "Whoa, not, we're not sending a check or 143 right off the bat." No, no, I, I no, get no. That. I think it's a per phase. So each, you know, uh, each phase would um, be um, the first design phase, and then the subtotal phase, and then the uh, or the permitting phase, the bidding phase, and the construction so, phase. So, yeah, but so it's. Trevor, it's what do you, how do you feel? I mean, like when you say negotiate down, like what, what, what are you thinking? I mean, um, well, I mean, I. I think you can always negotiate the price down. So that, I mean, that was my, my goal was to try and get okay. the cost down, you know, at least 5%. I mean, you know, you never take the number that's on the, on the top page. Right, but what, what you, okay, go ahead. This. I just read this, what you just read, and it doesn't, it, it's, it's a one, it's a lump sum fee. Now by a lump sum fee, the way he's talking, it, you're right, we're not gonna just hand the man a check but we are obligated to pay that fee. It's, he's gonna bill us monthly as he does the work, but mm -hmm. that's the fee we're gonna pay and that's not proper. The other what thing- What do you mean, I don't, go ahead and follow. You mean that total? That total. Right, we're, I'm gonna negotiate that total down and then we don't just pay them all at one shot that. Well, I, I understand we don't yep. pay them all at one shot, but right now that's, we're this agreement would obligate us to pay that total amount. Now, if if you, correct, we, we until talk we, so it goes down. That's one right. Thing. Yes, that's what that's what I definitely going to do. Another yeah. big problem that I see with this too is there's no timelines. And considering what we just went through, you know, this guy's been employed for no, 14 there months. Is. Yeah, it had to be com the whole complete uh, had to be completed by um, 
Yeah, May 2020. Uh, we'll see, the town secured an appropriation for the project on March 11th. The negotiations with the Mass DEP yielded an anticipated schedule yep. extension in May 2020. Therefore, based on the authorization to proceed by April 26th, we're a couple days late, we anticipate that the project would be completed by May 20th. Would you like to have language in there saying, you know, uh, the price goes down a certain percent if they're not completed on time? No, I, what I want to... might make sense. Well, that, that might be, but my, con my primary concern here is what we went through with getting this proposal mm -hmm. for the study done. Uh, this, this has an end date problem, but what happens if he takes a long time getting all of his stuff together, yeah. and so the, the, the contractor doesn't actually start until next February, and then the contract says, well, there's no way in the world I can. I just, right. this, I just got awarded this thing. Okay. I, we that need to sense. have time hold his feet on, to the fire. On the, on the each different phase. Maybe no, he puts it in here no, for each no, phase. No. How long it takes him to design it, have a date on that. Well, How that's long what I mean. That's the design phase, and then the permit phase, and then the bidding phase, and the construction phase. So each phase, I, I would think each phase we would have him put, right. like it would, must be completed by such and such. Right, or the design phase should be done on such a date. Right, no, right, right, right. The bidding phase should be done. That's the construction fair. that's kind of after thing. That makes sense. But that's, that's one thing that should do. So the, the only other question, I, or one of the questions I had is, um, we sent down the authorization and the town meeting voted that vote down to USDA. Yes. Do you? Are we still on track to find out? Yes, we are on track, but uh, you know. I know. Who knows? You know, we're talking about so, federal so government. So how does this want, because my, my, the thing I want to make sure we're going to do is this gets incorporated right. into the grant. If it does, yes, we have five years, and as long, this was right. in the application. Okay. This, this part was, so no matter what, that always will get rolled back in. If we get the grant or we decide to go to USDA, um, this this phase gets rolled into so, that. The, so design the design gets paid, and all of that. So all of it, because because what exactly. I wanted to do, I mean, we don't, obviously we're not going to lower rates, and we want to keep, you know, nudging up the rates a little bit, but we need to figure out a way to stabilize the rates. I mean, you know, we gave everyone the worst case scenario, so mm -hmm. everyone had heads Yeah, up. depending on what right. we get for a loan right. and a grant right. and all that. So yep. we gave worst case scenario. So what we want to do now is we really want to focus on, okay, we're going to use up the grant money so it delays us as a town paying in it anything, right? Because mm -hmm. we're going to use up, say we get a $3 million grant. We're going to use their $3 million first. Right? Uh, I'm not sure that's how that works. No. So no, how does that work? It doesn't work like that. So how does yeah. that work? You don't so get the grant till the end. Right, you get the money at the end. And you get the grant, it takes it off. Like the yeah, school the roof. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So, so the rates got to go, based on what he had done, the rates would follow whatever chart he had come up with. And I think okay. we'll have a further discussion based on what we get for a grant, how that then in, impacts Okay, so it. what we want to do is we want to be able to break this out in um, parts so that we could stretch this out a little bit. Because... Which one? This, this, this one? Oh, the second one. No, no, one. we're going to yeah, do this. One we, we're have gonna to do. Do, right. we have to do this immediately. But what I'm thinking of is, okay, we have a 30-inch channel. Can we just, you know, put in kind of screen thing to keep up, to make, I mean, here we are going to put the clarifier in, and then we don't really have a head works done yet. So we could tr be trashing our clar brand new cl clarifier. No, no, yeah, I agree. So can it we do a temporary kind of screen be thing? They're going to together. Right. With this. Initially, how are they going to be together? Well, this is going to get started, and if we can get yeah. started at the same time, yeah. we're, you I know, mean, get started with the design. Something. You're not going to build it at the same time, but you're right. Yeah, I mean, and, and then we. Can I would sort love of not to have have to do that clarifier for another two years, but it's got to get it's got to uh, get no, done. No, no, we got to do this. There's no question. But what what I want to do is to see if you know how can we parcel out the cost? Can we parcel these things out a little bit more affordable? And um, I mean, I, I just. Feel I know, like Carolyn, it's going to be painful. It's, I know, but we're it's, just it's, gonna have it's to going to be too painful. I mean, not, really, we need to be as best of thoughtful course. as possible. So, of course. putting in a screen so that we don't trash this brand new clarifier. We'll talk and to him then, about that. See yeah, if there's a way and to then, uh, you do know, something do we in fix the, the second Do we fix the second clarifier or do we go to mm. Headworks or. So, no, so. You do. You do I, I want to. I, I don't have a good road map. And I would really, 
you know, I, you know, and the, how do we keep the impacts down as much as possible to the taxpayers and and take advantage once we get find out what we have for the grant, mm -hmm. and then how do we parcel it up in a way that makes sense for you know us? I mean, we have a we have a general roadmap, mm -hmm. and we did and we put you know went out and did the worst case scenario, so no one can say that we didn't tell them it was going to be grossly expensive, but. So now we got to focus in how how can we make it as affordable as possible? How do we break it out so it the sections make sense, and and what and how the repairs are going to be? You mm -hmm. know. So I hear we, what you're saying. We need a definitive plan. We have a road map. This is okay. We're going to go to California, but I want. Are we going on I-80 straight out to California? Yes. Or are we going down? <laughs> are we going down the southern route and going out? No, we're not Grand sightseeing. Canyon? We're not sightseeing. Or are we going we're up fixing north the plan. And going to Glacier National Park? No. Nope. I want to know how. It's all we're strict get there. business. Yeah. It's okay. a business trip, Carolyn. No sightseeing. Okay. So I want. Rocket ship. Rocket ship. <laughs> I want, we have I hear what you're saying. So, I, I agree with you. I, we oh, need to okay. make it as affordable as possible and not trash the stuff we're just putting in. And so headworks would be first, the bar screen would be, you know, that. I think that's the plan is to get that going. That We know that's the most important part other than this clarify that we're under order to fix. Yeah. So that would go first, second clarifier after that, aeration, all that stuff. We'll get a, we'll get a map together of how it, how it will need to go. Okay. I, sure. I just no doubt. wanted to look at some options mm -hmm. and, you know, We'll give you Rest some. breaks. Yes, we can stop off to yeah to see I, I the mean, large uh, the large ball of yarn somewhere. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I just I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're doing this the most cost effective way yes, possible. Yes, of course. And 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 maybe timing wise, we could you know have a better timing that would not make the rate so high. I don't know. Well, but and also the reason another reason is. Honestly, I don't think before in two more years we're not going to have t any more money, but but in two years there could be a whole bunch of money, you know, infrastructure plans happening. Yeah. So we what we want to do is be ready to have this stuff for other grant opportunities. Of course, additional always stuff. looking. Yeah. yeah. No so doubt. if you have Each it broken year. out, then you can just you know we can whip out the applications and. Mm -hmm. Make sure we try to secure more money. That's the goal for sure. Well, you could take some of the money and go to MGM and let it all ride and <laughs> get paid for nothing. <laughs> okay. Goal. If you. Well, so but I, you know I what still, I'm saying, Kevin. I, I, do, I do understand. You I know, in, like, in, if, if I may, you know, please, um, I understand you're looking at the really big picture on the entire project. Mm -hmm. um, but what we really need to focus on is the clarifier. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and I don't have a problem and, and with to, that. And to kind of go along with that, you know, I mean, you know, I, I can see where Kip's coming from. He's got some concerns on, on this, which I'm quite sure that, that Dave Prickett would have no problems uh, right. adjusting it as needed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite sure that, that uh, Trevor will be very um, successful in, in his dealings with Dave. Uh, Dave's a very fair guy. Realistically, uh, my own personal opinion, um, he's a smaller operation. He's, he's not going to be asking for a whole ton of money. If you want to... Other players, other places, uh, tie-in bond, Weston and Samson, and the other ones where they have high, um, high overhead. You're gonna that high overhead has to be put into the sub into the project someplace. So you're gonna be paying more money. Again, personal opinion. Um, but to kind of go along with what Kip had at one point in time, is if we can go ahead and we can move forward with with the clarifier, which we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, I've got about ninety thousand dollars right now in capital very specific to a mechanical bar screen mm -hmm. or a, a fine screen screw or, or something similar to that to get the trash out of the In system the before it goes through. Um, you know, and I, and I know Kip was there, uh, or tried to go there Friday of last week to go ahead and measure it up with... with uh, um, so it's possible to do uh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. it's definitely possible. See, but, but the question okay. is, is... is can we make it so that piece of equipment that we buy to put in there is not just a throwaway unit and something that we can utilize either as part of that unit yes. or if that it's possible to sense. bring it to Old Deerfield? I mean, because right now in Old Deerfield, I brought you to saw Old Deerfield. Yep. The mechanical bar screen there is yep. literally mechanical. 
Reach yeah. down, pull it out, put it in a bag. Reach down, pull it out, put it in a bag. And then it goes into a little crane or a little lift. Hoist, yeah. And then they hoist it all the way up and then it goes out to the, to the trash. Um, could it be possible if we get a small enough unit to be able to do what we need in South Deerfield? Mm -hmm. Could it be possible to go ahead and incorporate that into the channel in, in Old Deerfield? I don't know. That's right. not my... We'll get it's some not what questions I do. on that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, is it possible to go ahead and, and have somebody look at that at the same time? Certainly. I mean, because the, the part of part of the, one of the problems we're really running into is because of all the garbage that's going in there, it's 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 taking our aerator and it's and it's choking it down. Completely. And every time we choke it down with that material, it's costing us more money to run it electricity wise. Mm -hmm. And then the worst part is, is lately we've been getting so much in there that it's actually been taking the aerator putting it into a shutdown. Yep. So in the past three weeks, that thing is shut down four times. On average, they're assuming, can't tell for sure, but by how many bugs have died, they're assuming when that thing dies, it's going down for anywhere between 12 and 14 hours. Mm -hmm. It goes down for 12 or 14 hours. Oh. The, the, the chemical um, reaction, however everything works in there, the, the chemistry, uh, eating this, the bugs, whole nine yards, Everything dies off, and, and it's it's being extremely difficult for Keith to try and keep us within within um, within and code. And he's doing a great that. and he's doing a great job. He really well, is for what he's got handed to him. He, I think he's doing a very good job. But you know, I three years ago when I started here, I went down and that was my first introduction there. And everything that you just said had been happening before I went down there, hmm. and that's what causes. And you know, it, it's frustrated me for three years that we just didn't buy a channel cleaner and put it in there. It could have been done in less than a week. Um, and the big opposition was our operator said, oh, we're putting a Band-Aid on something. But it was something that would have kept the rags up. Those rags have caused problems all the way through. All the problems that uh, Kevin just spoke about, mm -hmm. it even caused, I believe, the majority of the problems that wrecked our um, second clarifier because it froze up and all this stuff. You know, I know. And, and, and this is this has been my frustration since day one. It's just got to do it. I but, feel uh, like I mean, honestly, shouldn't we put a blinking sign out or something? Well, Stop putting <laughs> flushables down the sewer. It's it's that's it, I'll be honest with you. I hate to say it, but it's pretty much a no no win situation. Yeah, Although yeah. I did find one wipe. I think it's called the handyman. And that particular one is a actual biodegradable that does not have the nylon woven into it like the normal wipes do. Um, that has been the only one I have been able to find so far that is that is actually uh, biodegradable. And actually, it was a friend of ours that showed it to us because I, I was giving her hell. I was like, you don't flush that. She goes, I can. And I was like, just because it says flushable, she goes, no, really, look at it. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Well, um, Ke Kevin, can you go out and get one, and then we can, like... We can show it, but, you know, and, and you know, we, we've, we've tried to go down the education road, you know, we've, we've kind of yeah, beat our head into the ground. People, you know, we people. pounded on the doorways. We tried to explain to everybody, you know, and, and, and the major problem that I see is, is it's almost like we're poisoning ourselves. We are, we are doing this, and it's costing us more money. And every time we throw one down, you know, you may go ahead and just take, a, take one out, and by the time you take it out and use it, it's two cents. But by the time it gets all the way down to the plant, you know, if it's a backup, if we go ahead and flood out somebody's house, so if we do this or we do that, now that two cent wipe could be a box, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Well, you people know? literally, people's sewer bills are doubling because of what they're doing, flushing. And and it's nobody's fault. I shouldn't say it's nobody's fault, but their own. Thirty wow. percent is their fault. The rest of it is is from us kicking the can, not doing anything for a long time. But we're not we're not helping collectively between the grease. And the rags, it's it's killing me in the collection system. I know. Yep. And, um, and it's true. And that you saw the ones that, in Agawam, and, and I've seen them in four other locations, and these things work so good. You know? A mechanical well, bar, it's something to take it out of the yeah. system, I agree with yep. 110%. So, so what I don't agree with is the grinder, because so all the grinder does is up. just grinds up. Right. Yeah. Grinds them up, makes them smaller, yep. but then as it goes through the system, it's still so in the system, oh, yeah. and then it up, binds back up. together. Yeah. That's yeah. the so problem I have with the grinder. Yep. But so, but uh, something to be pull it physically pull it out of the system. I, that's yep. what so we can need. we yep. so we're going to go forward with that right this green. 
Well, that's, that, that, like is, that is part of the headworks. No doubt that is part no, of the no, headworks. No, 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 but can we put in a temporary screen? Well, we'll, well that's we'll what we need to look at. I mean, you know, it, yeah. it would have to be, you know, you could, you could probably, and, and again, I may be speaking out of turn because I'm not the engineer, um, but you could possibly go ahead and buy a, a less expensive unit, put up a still building around it. I mean, the still building's not going to last very long because it's very caustic in there, and you can't really have any electricity in there because, because once it's inside, because of what it is, now you have to make sure that everything is, I believe it's class one certified for explosion proof, um, which is gonna bring the prices up on stuff. So if you can bring some of your electrical outside, you know, it, it's, it's possible to do, which, which really kind of cracks me up because this whole sewer project all evolved around me asking the question four years ago, saying, hey, I've got money here for a mechanical bar screen. What is this, how does this thing work? And then once I found out, okay, well, it needs a building around it. And then all of a sudden, now we're here four years later spending right. $19 but million. Dollars. The, the building doesn't have to be, and, and I used, I chose inappropriate words when I said you can just put up a, a cheap building like that. You can put up a, I looked at the one in, I already forget the name of town, down in southern Connecticut. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a block, insulated block building that had insulated and vinyl siding on the outside and the channel cleaner sat inside of this thing yep. and everything went out. The only thing that was out, actually there was a, a, like a nine by eight overhead door where the dumpster sat. So they'd open the overhead door and the truck would just drive up to yep. it, could pick the dumpster back up, yep. dump it and set it back in there. You know, <clears throat> and, and right. that's, that's the, the, the way to go. And yep. you, you know, I, I think that you would find, I feel very confident that you would find that that would do it would eliminate all of the process to get rid of a lot of that other stuff. Um, two of the other plants that I went to, and one was right in Sunderland, and where they have similar aeration tanks like we have, they're, they are smaller, but they're very similar. And one was empty. What they do is they switch every year. And I was first told that at ours, that all of, because we have no grit removal and no sediment removal, that it fills up these tanks and that you have to get cranes and lower bobcats in there and it's, it's this big chore. Well, that has not happened for at least five years and yet it's still operating on the same tank. Now what they do in Sunderland, like I said, they switch one for the other. When they drain their tank out, they let it dry and they have about an inch of stuff in there. Now the guy does go in there and he cleans it out by hand with a shovel. He doesn't do it all at once. He does it, you know, because he's got a certain amount of time he has to spend in his building dealing with the mix and stuff like that, but he has downtime. And I, I saw other things like that. And I think if you bought one of these channel cleaners and you installed it, you would find that it would get rid of 80% of your problem. Now, yes, we still have to deal with aeration and clarifiers like and, cl and different type of chemical things and stuff like that. I get it. but. Every, everybody that I've ever talked to at the sewage treatment plant, and, and I spoke, spent a lot of time with Josh, and he's spent his entire life with this. It's these wipes and yep. foreign things that go through the system and cause all kinds of problems with pumps and pipes and valves. That's, and, but that's why I don't want to invest a million dollars into this clarifier and then have it break. Well, the, clar well, the, clarifier, the clarifier should be all right, you know, but again, it's because when you look at the big clarifier, you know, it goes round and round and round. And then if you look at the actual center where it, where it pivots off of, and some of the photos, you'll see some of the older ones that I yep. showed you, where it looks like a big mushroom right. coming, yeah. growing that's out of head. it. No, that's mushroom. grease. Yeah. It's grease. You know, and then that's rags, and, and, it's, and it's the garbage, and it's all the other things besides made just... made it through the whole yep. system. That made it through the system and got to that point. And then that's where we get sucked. We, we go there with Greg's, and we suck that out, the center well, and then we put it into the other tank, which is ludicrous. I mean, because right. because then now we have to take that, suck it out, send it out. I mean, because we had I don't know how many years worth, but years. Um, we had no more room in that tank, so we ended up having to bring an engineering or uh, an environmental firm came in. They grabbed it, they brought it, they rinsed it, then they mixed it with sawdust and everything else, and then they were able to get rid of it for solid waste. Mm -hmm. Well, that cost us a lot of money, yes. a lot of money. Well, but um, that's why here again exactly those, you those put that in there it's, it's, it's are so helpful because the grease itself is not a hazardous material it's with what's in there hmm. and these the channel cleaners you know they have that high pressure water that washes away all of the 
the feces and stuff right. like that, all the it all washes down. Then it goes through that press where it squeezes more of that contaminants. Mm -hmm. So you're just getting the wipes, but there's a lot of that grease, and it actually kind of works like a sausage machine. The right. grease binds exactly. the wipes together, yeah. and it goes through this slow-turning screw, and it pushes out the sausage, and it goes every 12 inches, depending how heavy, it breaks off and goes in the dumpster. It's, it's, you know, it's the same video I showed you guys three years ago. I think they work great. So but I would anyways. just like to have, be able to negotiate this next week, adjust these times, get some time on here as well, some, some um, I think this is a good idea. start dates. Yeah, yeah. Dates. Why don't you yeah, get, talk with him about mm -hmm. start dates and stuff like that. I still, Completion dates. I still, like you say, you want to keep this, um, you know, affordable. I, I still don't understand why we didn't, you know, we don't get bids on this. Well, this I, is 14, 15 percent. I mean, there's a good chance that we get somebody to do it for 10 percent. Well, and I, Dave might do it for 10 percent, but maybe, you know, uh, all of for me, all of the because we don't have time for that. We I need to get why? moving because we well, got to get this done by well, we got to get done by May. I'm not going to have somebody else come in. I trust Dave and I, I feel very comfortable with him and he's worked with us for a long time. I'd like to give him this project. I'd like to negotiate the price down. I think uh, to start over right now and have somebody else go through and figure out all this stuff and give us another bid and, and deal with somebody I don't know after all this time seems r ludicrous. Well, you might think so, but think about that last March mm -hmm. when he sat here and said, I'm a small firm. I can, mm -hmm. I can cater to you people. I think I can just, can. I've done all the things. I asked you in December, where is this thing? And your reply what, to me was that he's busy. He's Which quoting thing? other jobs. Where was our report, that $80,000 well, like report? Like I said, he, he gave you that answer the other night. He was a couple weeks late on it. We didn't start him whoa, for whoa, whoa, two whoa. months. A couple of weeks. No, we didn't it was start not a him for weeks. two months. No, Trevor. He was supposed to have that I'm not going to have this argument to, again. I'm well, just, you, you, but I'm, I'm just saying, you want to spend the taxpayer's money. Yes, I do. <laughs> apparently, you do. And I want to be smart about it. Well, the, yeah. then why aren't you getting other people? Because you, you we've see, worked with him. We the guy asked the other people already. He spent four months delaying our project. He did not get, spend. That's a lie. Kip, we didn't. That's a lie. When did we get that report, Trevor? We just got it a couple months ago. No, or no, a month no. Ago. Couple, we got it at the end of March. Yes. It was supposed to be here in December. But we asked him to do other stuff, and we what started we it to later. Do? We didn't ask him to do anything okay. extra. Um, again, we've had this conversation. Kip, that's Kip, not I'm true. not having we it. Had the we did the clarifier, <clears throat> and we did the USDA grant. Move on. That was separate. That's right, and those are separate things to do. And, and he said that but he could give us the personal attention, and that didn't happen. He did. It. He, did. he did not start okay. until Labor Day. He was the schedule. You know, the schedule was supposed to start July first. He didn't get started till J September first or whatever Labor Day was Monday's after Labor Day, quick. because we didn't even sign the contract sign until the, contract. the end of July, oh. and he didn't even get it to him. Okay, Jeff. Go for it. Just uh, a quick comment. Why don't you come up to that mic? Yeah. Well, just a very quick comment, and and I appreciate what Trevor's saying. Everything that's been discussed here. Definitely has to be done. There's no question about it. Uh, but I'm just looking at, I realize the clarifier is an issue, and I appreciate that. It needs to be addressed. The sooner, the better. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand where you're coming from, Trevor. And I'm not questioning your negotiating skills, but I've negotiated contracts. And I'm a little concerned. Uh, David, with his team, sat in our annual town meeting the other night and heard the appropriation and the approval of $19 million. Mm -hmm. Now, if coming from a position of negotiations, you, I really think you need some options at some point. I agree with because, you. Because, oh, because I, yeah. as far yeah. as far yeah. as, yeah. as, yeah. because it's, yeah. it's always good to negotiate from a position of strength, mm -hmm. to, to walk in there and dealing with one person and try to negotiate the price down after they've sat in an annual town meeting and heard a $19 million appropriation, yeah, that's, that's pretty difficult. Everything. That's pretty difficult to do. Well, so, and, and Jeff, I'm not, and I'm not saying anything about David or anything. I'm just I'm saying sure. best practices would be if it would be nice if we had some options on the table other than David. And I'm not saying we need to, you know, I'm not saying that it has to be done immediately because I realize the clarifier is an issue. 
But uh, yeah. but I think David could handle the clarifier as a separate Correct. entity. He is. And then, That's and what then, this right. is. Just, and then just, the rest of this down the road for, right. <clears throat> maybe be able to go out, as Kip is saying, maybe go out and at least get some uh, you know bids or mm -hmm. other options so we can put that on the table when we're dealing with David down the road. Okay. Price wise, that's I, that's the only thing. I, I absolutely agree with that, and the reason why is because, you know, we're going a road trip to California. We want to make sure we're getting there as efficiently as possible. Right. No, and I understand that. I'm I not, just, um, you know, so I agree. From but position, there's no time. Strength, it's a lot better. But but there's on this clarifier. If I think you can negotiate the price down some mm -hmm. and make it and reasonable. And put the timelines in. That makes sense. Yeah, and and the timeline does make sense. Um, to make sure that we have a timeline in mm -hmm. here is good um, because we do want, we, we have to get this done. Yep. I mean, no, I, I we already have an the, extension from right. DEP. I understand with the clarifier yeah. situation, I just hope the rest of the project is not under the gun like the clarifier. Right. It won't be. Or well, no, that's why I was be. trying to. Exactly. That it shouldn't was, be at this point. Shouldn't be. Right. But that's right. why that's I wanted to see for. if we could put in a screen thing right. so which, that we had which, time to sort this out a Which is still part of money I already have. This right. is capital money. But that's, that's why I think we should be right. able to do that. We should be able we should be able to incorporate both yeah. at the same time. But you know, I understand where everybody's coming from. You know, you want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, the right dime. Um, this was this was printed on twenty fifth. The meeting was on the twenty ninth. So Dave had no idea when he put this bid together how much money was going to be appropriated for the entire project, which which was just authoriz my understanding was was just Authorization it to is. have the capability mm -hmm. of being able it to is. borrow 19 million dollars with having to go back to the to the residents, the taxpayers. Each time we wanted to go to a different part of it, we had to like go back to them. That was my general understanding. Was that kind of the deal that you cut with the town? Yeah. Um, That's. But I think works. I think and and I'm not trying to be out of line here. But the bottom line is what you're talking about right now is this. Right. Take everything else out. Make mm -hmm. talk about that another day. Correct. Mm -hmm. But move forward with this. Yes. Is my 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 own personal opinion. And then if you want to go ahead and look forward, when when you start doing the other bigger parts of it, that is part of the 19 million dollars. If you decide you want to go ahead and, and have somebody else look at it and, and for design or whatever, that's fine. But the project in your face right now is what you guys are talking about. Is very strictly the clarifier. And, and right. I think that's well, actually, and I won't. I won't wanted to do that screen. Right, but but right here, what you guys are talking about right here, right now, right now, is the clarifier. Right. Yeah. So if you can go ahead and and move forward with the clarifier vote for this part of it, then we can start moving forward because the longer we wait to make decisions, um, and he doesn't meet the, the end of the. It, thing he's not. Again. He's not going to be able to meet because, like you said, Kip, again. all of a sudden it's going to be a deal of okay. Well, you know, we waited and we and we've done collective we have done this in the past where all of a sudden, you know, we've got a contract that was given to us in March and we don't, we don't sign it until November. And then in December we're saying, where's my report? And they say, well, I've only had it for three weeks, you know, and, I, and this is, this takes me six months to put it together. Very specifically the transfer station. I was just going to so, ask about that. What's the that's, deal on that's that? still kind of up in the air right now because apex, the people from apex are gone. I guess my general understanding is, is a company bought them out, walked into that part of Apex and said, everybody step away from your computer, grab all your personal stuff. All we want to see is pens and pencils and jackets and that's it. Get out now. Who's but they didn't, they didn't do the contract. Yeah, I know. Who is it? And nobody but called that's us. Our, that's our well. Yeah, ministry. the people that we were had to really go for because they were the ones that I was told that we had to go with. And now, unfortunately, they really kind of don't exist and... Well, technically, they kind of do exist. Well, they had a signed contract. But they had so a signed contract. And that's what I'm doing now is we're going through the contracts as we speak to making sure, because I don't want to speak out of turn saying, hey, they still owe us something yeah, until I, I finish. So Brenda and I are going back and forth looking at what's been, what, what's been signed for contracts, what's been accomplished for work, what's been closed out as work, and where are we at? Is there anything open at this point in time? Can you give DEP a heads up that we have potentially some problems? So yeah. that sure. And just I mean, because I've already talked with Larry call. anyway, so Larry's Larry's yeah. kind of aware of what's going on. Yeah, but tell so. him we're pursuing it, and that you know we're gonna you know meet our deadline as much as possible right. for our reports. But exactly. potentially there could be some problems, and we're gonna give him a heads up. Right. 
you know, because the other part I talked to him briefly about, and I'm like, I know there's other people who want to be up here, but um, I talked to him briefly about because we're going back and forth with uh, with the solar. Are they going to come? Are they not going to come? You know, if they do come, are they going to help us out with those two depressions? Are they not going to help us out? My general understanding is I was told that I will have that area fixed this construction season right. as I was supposed to have it done last construction yeah. season. Just yeah, so, but that's mandated, so we don't have a so choice. So I don't anyway. have a choice on how yeah. I'm going to go about it. I've already got the material there, and I think I can do it fairly cheaply. All, basically, all I have to do is go out and lay out our, 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 our uh, geofabric, and because it's already been approved by DEP, lay down the geofabric. I can roll out a road on the backside. The only thing is, is, is I'm still in negotiation going back and forth with them as to whether I have to have an engineer there every second that we're working on the cap. But the problem is, is there was another town here in Western Mass that was told to do something very specific way, and they did it their own way, and it got really bad. And the person that allowed him down in uh, Springfield DEP got mud in his face because Nothing he allowed this person to do it, and he didn't do what he was supposed to do, and he ripped the cap. Um, Six hundred thousand dollars worth of damage. Blah 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 blah. So it's so they're a little sketchy, mm -hmm. but they kind of like me a little bit. So maybe we'll be able to do a little negotiation back and forth and say, well, that's why I want you to make sure you give him a heads up. Right. So call like I said, he's well he's, he's already well aware of what's going on. As soon as I found out, he was my next phone call. So Good. Thank matter you. of fact, I'm sorry, but he found out before actually you did. So no, 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 that's sorry. fine. Because <laughs> Kevin, that's fine. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a good relationship. Oh, exactly, with them. exactly. I mean, they've been very good. They've with been us. good to us. So, they have been. You know, I don't so, want to want to do bad things to good people. So can I ask uh, what, what you want me to do with this one? Do we want to vote on this? You guys go with me? Um, yeah, we're good. Thanks, Kevin. Excellent. Thank you. Why don't you meet with him and talk, negotiate the price if you can? And we can vote you it can. Week. Vote it on and, Wednesday. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I think it it's important the time It's not going to hurt anything to do it, to put it off, right? Or we Every week it. we're going to hear yeah, the okay. argument just, every yeah, time. Yeah. So, I mean, time but I, I understand we need to have a number here and we need to have a, a, yeah. a different contract. So, correct. So I'll do that as fast as we can and hopefully we'll have it done uh, for you to vote next week. Yes. Um, okay. Next item. And, and just. Is there much engineering involved with a screen? You know, yes. There is. Well, it depends no. on what you put in. You could just slip something in like he's saying, or yeah. you know, we have well, to just see what, whether no we want to. Yeah, well, I, I was hoping we could slip something in so it would be relatively. What? I mean, Let's it would have be that under conversation. Kevin's budget. Let's have One of the things that you guys should be aware of, too, is that um, I'm not going to mention any names for this conversation. There are different firms of different sizes and different capabilities. There are some people that sit down and they're going to they're gonna design something, they're going to do something. There are other companies that design these things every single day, tenfold over, and they can probably go to a computer, hit a few buttons, and you get your design done. So yeah, how much are they going to charge us for it? I guess we're not going to know. But I, I'm just saying that when, when you when you don't look outside the box, you pay the price. Well, we are going to look outside the box. Well, no, we're not. Not for the clarifier, because well, we, we need that's to... my point. But I, I'm just saying yeah, that there's there are, are people out there who are like the Ford Motor Companies of the car thing. You know, yeah, you can go down to the and guy we'll down the street, and look, he can, we can they can bid on I, the rest of the stuff. I, I'm I'm just informing you that 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 there are ways of doing this that. There are. We're already behind, though, Kit. We're formed. That's exactly my point. Because instead of hiring somebody to figure out all these calculations, there's somebody that can say, "Here." This clarifier was in order. I'm not saying it isn't. That are, you're missing my point. No, I'm not. I'm not. But the point it. is, you can either go mm -hmm. over to Cumberland Farms and buy your gallon of milk, or you can go to Yaswinski's, milk the cow, homogenize the milk, and do the whole thing. You know which is going to be cheaper for you to do, and, and I'm just Winsky, saying. will give it to you for nothing. No, they won't. <laughs> but my point is that there is a smart way of doing this. Next item, please. Uh, an opening for a full oh, well, town no, administrator. We've got to, no, let's, no. Let's, let's, these guys. I forgot about these guys. Yeah, They've been no. sitting there so long. <laughs> Come on up. It's past seven thirty. Now we can do it. Seven thirty-five. Seven thirty-five. Seven thirty-five. Tom, thank you. I'm sorry. Damn. I apologize for that. I'm 
That's okay. You come and yell at Pat tomorrow, Matt. No, never. <laughs> Matt comes anyways to listen to us. Matt yeah, that's likes right. To come that's in right. anyway, so. I'd love to be here. <laughs> um, I think you better read it again, just in case. Uh, sure. Okay, the Town of Deerfield Select Board Notice of a Hearing. The Select Board of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on May 1st, 2019 at 7.35 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. On an application of Deerfield Naturals, LLC in accordance with the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 179, Article 4, Section 4650, Medical Marijuana, treatment centers and section 4660 marijuana establishments. Deerfield Naturals requests for a special permit for marijuana cultivation for medical purposes from the select board. Marijuana cultivation facility of 18,621 square feet to be located at 10 Greenfield Road in South Deerfield. Your turn. Welcome. Thank you. Well. Deerfield Naturals began here with a host community agreement. And then we went to the planning board because under your bylaws, special permits for recreational marijuana and for retail and for manufacturing are obtained from the planning board. We made a full presentation there and that was unanimously granted. Good. However, under your bylaws, is the select board that decides whether or not a medical marijuana cultivation license is granted. Mm -hmm. And so we're back on that. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to come. No, we're glad to come and we've given a, a number of public presentations about this already. Yes. And I think you're familiar with it because we gave you a public presentation when we got our host community agreement. Yep. Yes, you did. And I think it's quite straightforward yep. at this point in time, and we're just asking the board uh, to vote to grant the cultivation license for medical marijuana. That will be in the same facility as the license that's already been granted by the planning board for right. um, cultivation of for recreational marijuana. Yep. Yep. And they also granted a license for retail and a license for manufacturing at the same time. Great. How are you making out with the CCC in the state? Is that we're waiting words? for these, this, this from you. Okay. And we're going to be applied in the next 30 days. Wonderful. Okay. So, well, I don't have any additional questions I, because yeah, we've, we've um, everything is this. the same. Um, it's everything you've heard before, just yes, another piece of paper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's true. Um, sure. Might I recommend? Yes, I, I mean, Kip, you would know better than I, but you could do a similar uh, per, similar findings as the planning board. I mean, these operations are going to be side by side, correct? Yeah. They just have to, the different authorities of correct. who's permitting. So, One and the same. I don't know how you feel about Nothing's that. Nothing's changed um, with um, from a security I, point of view nope. from the last nope. applet uh, time. Um, nothing at all. I don't, I don't see anything different. Uh, you know, I've sat through the planning board thing as well, so I'm, yep. but. I, um, I'm fine making a motion to approve this. I would second that motion. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye I'm gonna abstain from voting on that. Okay, so you any other board? I don't mess yep. you up. Yep. Sure. Let's go to that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. There's two, zero, one. Will you let us know um, if, if you get anything from the commission? We will. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Just so we have a heads up as soon as we And then we'll just get the, the letter of non-opposition to work that out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Di Diana, could, would you be able to get that off for them? Well, so we they, did one already for you guys, right? Do you need yeah, but do you need one for this? Do you need a different one for, one for medical this? is what you're saying? Did yeah. we not yes. do one for medical? Yes. So, the, I actually just found this out recently, but we actually need a letter of non-opposition after we submit to the commission. Oh, okay. So we, the, the date is incorrect, so okay. once oh, okay. we submit, we will. Okay. okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah, so they'd already issued one, I believe. Yep. So yeah, we could just re revise that and change the okay. date. Okay, great. So you, you would have it ready for them? Yeah, when, when he said yeah. they need it after they submit.
that. So, yep. okay. so how long, um, so you know, obviously, Matt, I think more than, uh, but about uh, we have a, some staffing shortage. Yeah. As far as this decision, like, do you need this decision to be, to be presented as part of your petition to them or? No. 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 Okay. Just, just that this happened. Yes. Okay. All right. I just yep. want to make sure because you know our decisions are. Okay. In yeah. Because okay. we are short staff. So if you need anything, please let Diana know so that she can, you know, get it to you right away. Um, sooner the better because, yeah. you know, she's not available. I mean, there, she's handling everything. Well, I'm, I'm concur. I mean, I know that the planning board is, is working on that too so we have right once the so planning can, board makes their decision then you could adopt those right. same we findings. can just have to do that yeah okay. no you've already voted it's the it just it, the decisions being written oh. finalized still yeah yeah so that's what i'm saying Good yeah. luck. i know well it's just yeah <laughs> so we're doing it but yes thank you thank you we're, yeah we're just do i mean we don't want to make sure we'll we're not holding you up thank you I appreciate that all right awesome so thank you just you. need to keep bugging us if we need anything we'll ask Please, yep. do. Please, Please do. So Please do. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. All right. Yep. Thank you for coming. Sorry, you had to wait. Have a good night. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. While you're deciding what to do next, can I just announce that we're, you know, just to remind people that we are composting at the dump? We have started? Yeah. It's supposed to be May 1st today. Oh. I mean, you know, starting but tomorrow. My question was how do you, um, do they have a bin already there? Supposedly for tomorrow, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I should have asked Kevin while Yeah, they here. had an effective date, but I, for some reason, I thought, I it, was thought it was May 1st. May 7th. Was it? Well, on the slide, didn't it say? Uh, oh, I thought it said May, it say May 1st. 1st. I don't remember, but I, I, um, I don't know. I thought we were going to also are anxious something to get on the going website. And I know. The bins there and I think it's yeah, great. we were just, because we were just waiting for the, I think the, the bin, you know, the, the material, the compact. Actually, right, the, the, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, the container, the right? The container, yes. Yep. I'm having a hard time. Well, uh, I will text Kevin right now, and maybe he'll so let us know before the this. end of a Diane, meeting. did you want me to sign this thing for uh, food strength? Oh, uh, Leo Stable leasing. Uh, yes, yes, we need that. That's what needs to be, that's the form that needs to be submitted to ABCC. Because obviously you remember you're just submitting this to approval for right. approval for, to ABCC. We, we all yes. sign this? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I was looking to see, I thought we were going to put something on that website, but you want do you want both of them signed? Uh, um, should we? Yes. Why don't we? Just in case. We, she said, let's just have an extra. Okay. Uh, hopefully, Kevin will see this and he'll get back to us. Okay. Yeah. I guess we don't want the composting stuff up yet, but we'll put something up. Okay. Excellent. Um, Mentioning about the ZBA, is that um, who? who um, Chris Rochette, I think, is. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, he's not. Uh, doesn't want to be reappointed. Correct. Okay, I know they just bought um, an antique store up in uh, Winchester. So oh. It's probably. Okay. So we have a ZBA opening. If anyone's interested. And. And an opening for an appointment for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee. Con con well, con mouthful. Containers are already there. Oh. So composting, I think, is starting. Yay. Yep. Oh, good. Good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, containers are already there. So, yes, composting starts tomorrow. Yay. Cool. Okay. Diana, um, do you want to give us any reports you have? Well, I think, um, I mean, so we've gotten through town meeting. Um, I, as you, as Kip, thank you again for reminding me to get that USDA thing out the door for on that. So that went today. Um, I have, um, I've 
gone through, I still actually have been receiving applications for the assistant and the uh, slash planning official. So I am still accepting, but I have narrowed the field down to four um, finalists, which I'm setting up interviews for a week from Friday. I had asked um, John Wei and Barbara Hancock to participate, and Barbara can. Um, John's schedule right now is a little more hectic, so Trevor has um, offered to participate. So we're going to try to see if we can work that out. So um, I'm hoping for next Friday for those. Mm -hmm. um, the green communities boilers for the elementary school projects, uh, the elementary school project have been installed or being, um, they're in the process of being installed and will be commissioned in the next couple weeks and that project will be wrapped up and reported on. Um, we did all of our grant reporting for MVP. We had to get all of our quarterly report in for the first quarter ending mm -hmm. March 31st. So um, that went in for MVP along with that application for the next phase. Um, the Green Communities report um, was, was completed and I had another one that came up that I didn't realize we were doing but a hazard mitigation action plan. We also have a grant for that. So we did that annual report. So um, those have been done. Is there any hang up with the green communities, the boilers over there? We had a little kerfuffle, but it got ironed got it. out. Okay. So it's all set now. All right. So we're on track. Oh. We don't need an extension. We were going to apply for an extension, okay. which we could have from green communities. We were in contact with them, but and I don't think we're going to need it. Okay. We're going to be Good. finished. Our, um, our hazardous mitigation plan is going to be re um, expiring. We, um, we are supposed to have that grant. We that do. For COG, we is do. supposed to do. Yes, are we they, do. How are they yes, doing? Yes, we do. We have a contract with them. So that's what I just discovered that we have a contract with them. So we we kind of skipped a month because I didn't recognize that that was happening. But now I'm back with. I've uh, talked to Kim um, McPhee, who's working on the grant. So um, as I said, we did the reporting and we've gotten the we've kickstarted it back up again. So there'll be a committee meeting coming up, or the next oh. um, task, and I think is a, a meeting that we need to have, or some things to start yes, doing data have, we collection. Yes, we have to. We have to physically meet as a group yes. so, um, so that's the next we need to set that up because I, I want to make sure that it's in the pipeline that because I mean we were 18 months the last time okay. so all right. You just can't afford. I'll make sure Kim is on top of it. I spoke to her and she said she was going to be doing it. Because we can that. schedule a meeting the, right away. I mean, she is the consult. I mean, the, um, we have a contract with them to do. Yes. You know, like, and that, and so. we haven't, they yeah. haven't been. Yeah. Moving forward on it. I think that the, um, the just so you know, I think the COG planning department has had some transition. Yes. Of course, Pat they, retired. They reorganized. Um, they hired, I understood because I called about planning assistance, that they hired somebody, but somebody else left in the meantime. So they're still short staffed. They're hiring a land use planner. Um, so I just think they've got a little bit of transition going on right I know, now. So, but, but I will definitely stay on top of the hazard mitigation planning. So. Yeah, we, we can't get, we can't be expired without the new one already in the pipeline. Seriously. I think it's July, so we need to move on it pretty soon. Okay. okay. Um, and then, um, so I just want to mention for next week, so we're going to have a meeting. Um, so I have on there... Um, <coughs> Uh, right now, we're going to start at 7 because there is that 350th. The mm -hmm. next uh, Wednesday, the 350th committee is having an open meeting where they're hoping to attract more volunteers to participate in that yes, um, event planning process here. and the fundraising and all the committees. So that's going to be here. Um, I would propose you start at 7. Mm -hmm. We'll do the Eversource poll hearing, continue till 7.15. We'll look at the DPC contract I'll put on, the Atlas, Atlas. Farm one yeah. day. Um, I think also what you wanted to talk, what you wanted to do on the eighth originally, Trevor, mm -hmm. um, you had talked about was reorganization and some priority mm -hmm. discussion. Right. So I guess around that, so we're prepared. Do you want to? What might I suggest that maybe on the eighth, as you reorganize, you discuss sort of the process for that, and Correct. then how you want to kind of come up with that list? Yep. Because I have kind of a running list, but I presume you know some of the departments. I've been talking to department heads okay. about things that projects and priorities they see. Certainly, Public Works has a as a lot of them. Yep. Um, so just kind of how we're going to generate that list, sure. and then how you as a collectively as a group want to look at that stuff and and decide. So Perfect. I thought that's what I would put on that's for next fine. week. If that's, yeah, that's great. So reorganization and goal setting. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. So that's, that's all I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Thank uh, you. Are there any Board of Health reports or announcements? Oh, we didn't talk about the opening for the seeds. Oh, the oh. seeds, right. Yeah, that's something you would ask for. Comprehensive Carol. Economic Development Strategy position I, I had um, put on. 
uh, it's a five-year term. Um, the next term is July 1st of 2019 to, to 2024. And I, I really don't want to do another term. I've done two five-year terms. Um, but it's a central um, county rep. We, there's, we're allowed two. And um, I've been one of them for. Who's the other? Jonathan Edwards. Is the other rep? Yeah, but he hasn't. He doesn't usually participate. So, um, um, we have the who opportunity. Else, who are the other? Uh, who who else can Sunderland, Waitley, who, uh, other people can step up and do it? Yeah, Burniston, Northfield. Mm -hmm. It's it's central down. Um, Greenfield has their own appointment, so we don't have to do Greenfield. But it's Montague, and so technically we could do two people. But, I mean, this is the group that gave us help when we were doing the um, ex expedited permitting pr um, process. We got a little grant and mm -hmm. help from Western Mass Development to do the Oxford Pickle. And, you know, they, they um, put, you know, not that it did any good in the middle of a recession, but they um, publicized and did tours, bus tours mm -hmm. um, of potential developers through there, you know, for a couple of years. Um, yep. So it... I mean, it's it's very good because there's interesting things. It's, they handle the brownfields. They do brownfields assessment, and then they get the grants for the brownfields. So it's it's a good group, and it gives you good information. And it's interesting information for like employment trends and all that kind of stuff. But I d I just you know it would be nice not to do another mm -hmm. term. That's right. all. But I I think it would be important for us to have. Um, someone that would actually go to the meetings and vote and um, keep an eye out for potential. We can appoint potential. anybody to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know, we could do a town administrator or somebody, but it, it, it just is important. It's good information and it's yeah. potential grants and, and, and this is how you connect to do planning stuff. And, right. And, and it gives you a pipeline to the federal money if there's something coming down the pike. So. There's talk of it, but we'll yeah. see. I don't it's know. Just talking, good who backs knows, slapping right now. Who knows? But that it's kind of, um, you know, there's different. There's different. Um, you, there's a combination of government and private people. Like Mike McCusker from McCusker's Market comes from mm -hmm. West County, and you know, there's different. A few entrepreneur kind of persons, business people there, as well as government people. So it's a good group, and I I, I want us to be represented. Mm -hmm. um, and if no one is going to do it, then I'll do it again. But it just would be nice if there was somebody else doing it, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to cut back a little. Yeah, I'm not jumping in because I've got no. so much going on. That, no, no, um, no, 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 I'm not asking But it's you a to good do idea that. to think about who could yeah, I mean, it's support just seems, us. Yeah, I mean, we have new business people. and It's, it's, a, yeah. it's important. Yeah. And, and Central County has two. Two right. votes, so okay. it, it doesn't mean that there can't be two people from Deerfield. Okay. So, you know, whatever. It's good to good on, get on the radar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any Board of Health reports or anything, though? Um, well, we're... Um, we get a lot of water, but no uh, mosquitoes yet. No mosquitoes yet. No, it's, oh, it's man. chilly. Well, they're out a little Hang bit. On. We're not bad. We're, no one's doing any testing yet. We're not, we're not going right. to start testing for... Right. We're putting that off a little bit because of the temperature. Right, exactly. Yeah. Any public comments? Mr. Upton? No? No one else? Okay, we have some upcoming meetings on May 8th, as you heard, May 15th, May 22nd, and June 12th. Uh, we're going to be going into executive session, and then after that, we're not going to be coming back to open session. Um, but, but I'd like to say a few words. Uh, this is going to be my last select board meeting, and I want to thank everybody for all their assistance and their kind uh, thoughts and uh, words throughout the years. Um, you know, I hope I made the, the town a better place by me being here for three years. Yeah. And uh, what I'd like to say to my board members is that over the first few weeks that we were here, one of the things we were faced with was with the school roof. And kind of goes back to a lot of the things that I kind of lecture about, <laughs> is that, you know, you need to have an open mind and think outside of the box. And that you have to realize that all these people that sit before us are here to make money. They're going to help us do their job, but they're here to make money, and you have to find a way to figure out what's good for the town and what's not good for the town. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, 
the school roof was a prime example of how there were people out there looking out for their interest and not ours, not only from the state, in the state people, but from the OPMs and the architects. Um, they deliberately find equipment, peats, uh, parts, pieces, and ways of doing things to drive the cost up so they benefit. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we took a trip over to Waitley to look at a building where we were facing giving another community $650,000 to do a study about putting an ambulance out of our town. Once again, thinking outside the box developed a different outcome that was beneficial to all three towns. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, I thank you all for all of your assistance and uh, thank you for good your luck. Input. You Thank you for your effort, Kip. Yep. It's, it's helpful, and um, it's hopefully we won't be assigned the people that we were assigned pink and before yeah. for Pink I'll, I'll and Company and that. everybody else. Oh, my God. That was okay. an experience. It was. And so Thank you for being um, – it was really good because it, it was – we handled it to the benefit of the town, seriously. We did. And, and it was really – it was your effort to make sure they towed the line. That's what Everybody the job was together. about. Yeah, everyone worked together. All right, so now we're going to an executive session pursuant to can mass. I, oh, can, one second. Yep. Can I just check these dates? Because oh, yes, yes, I, I wanted to mention that. Because night, I don't Chris. think we're going to meet May 22nd. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, and so Kip kind of breezed through that, and I <laughs> talked. Okay. So May 20, um, I just put that on as a proposed. I wanted to mention that. On the May 29th, I would like to attend the Manager's Spring Conference, the Manager's Association Spring Conference. So um, I was hoping I could. It starts Thursday, but it's a three-hour drive, so I wanted to go Wednesday. Where is that? Um, um, I can't remember. Chatham, oh. Chatham. Um, so either I could, you can meet on the 29th without me, or mm -hmm. I was going to propose you meet on the 22nd. But Trevor actually can't meet on the 22nd. So um, okay, because I was going to say the only reason is because I want to make sure we're scheduling our. Um, you know, we have to get this tattoo regulations done. So what date were you going to think of doing the? Tattoo well, so let's, well, so let, that's the other, so let's think about the dates of the meeting. Got, so also, then. Uh, we were also so talking about you, having the street, uh, street light guy come and do a presentation. Right. For LED street lights, because he's done a study, should have some information. That's the guy who met at MMA. So right. that's the 15th? Or no, the no, I was going to do like. He couldn't come until the Yeah, the, till the, the end, end of the of month. May. So we'd either do the 29th or we'd do it in the beginning right. of June, June or something yeah. like and that. And that's, I had June 12th, it's just that was your regular meet, next meeting date. But if you want to do another in between, you know, you've been meeting almost every week. I don't know if at some point, you know, you want to we try will. to settle we'll break, back. We'll break into it back after two, a little bit. Two, yeah. But Certainly That's you could add another date. And if you wanted to do, the only thing we need to check on is the, you were saying, what did you just say? The, the tattoo. The, the tattoo, tattoo or the vape. Okay, because we're not well, we've got to check on both. But the, the vaping, I'm not 100% sure, sure. I mean, I want to get that done. I don't want to drag it out. But right. I, we still have right. the, the, the Somerville decision hasn't, hasn't been, been made. Right. And right. I, 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 would prefer, right. I would prefer us to do the Somerville version, which right. is... So, so the only, I think the only thing that we need to, I'll have to talk to Dick to make sure, but I think the tattoo regulations, you know, we don't have th them drafted for the town of Deerfield. So I just want to make sure that, and then all, we have to All post. you have to do is you just substitute Northampton, when you, where it says Northampton, you put in Deerfield. <laughs> for the draft, certainly yes, we could for do the that. Draft. So, so that's what we should do is have some draft regulations and, and then schedule hearing. the public hearing. And I right. guess that I just, we need the time to be able to advertise for that and stuff. So, I mean, if we wanted to do it the 29th, we got to know now. Otherwise, I would the suggest the first well, week Well, why don't we do right. the 28th? Is it, is, can you do it the 29th? Why are we not doing the 29th? Oh, well, if I wasn't. Oh, because you're not Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, if yeah, the 29th yeah. would work if you want to do the 28th. I mean, excuse me, the 28th, uh, that know, would be. Because you, I mean, usually. Yeah, that's if, the turf farm open house. Well, oh. we could, what time was this? That's at 6. <laughs> well, then why don't we go to the turf farm open house. Then come over here. Then come over here for 6.30. Okay. Or 7. Or 7. Or 6.30. Is that seven. enough time to get. Open seven. house stuff. Yeah. Seven. Make sure you wear your white booties over seven. there so you don't contaminate. Seven p.m. 
All right, May 28th, that's a Tuesday. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then on so that actually, agenda? So actually, that's good because um, the one thing we want, we, we want to check to make sure the MSDS sheets are on our website, and we need to check the storage mm -hmm. of chemicals we were going okay. to check in the open house. Yeah. Okay. And we, and we can follow up um, any other things that I, the, the residents don't want the barrier planting barrier for the most part so they don't want to block the spray it's kind well of, supposedly there's not going to be any drift from what they're going to do i didn't so. think there would be but yeah so okay. we need to we need to verify with the abutters that they absolutely don't want any plantings and we'll work right, because it out this was offered right because they were offered this and so okay. i just want to make sure truly I know two of the budding properties absolutely don't want it. So okay. we, because they're afraid it will cut down on the, the airflow in the oh, gotcha in the summer in the summertime. Yep. So probably right. We got you know we want to make sure people. I mean we want people to be happy. So whatever. You know. well, and we're are gonna we going to have enough pot places? They should all be very happy. <laughs> Are we Maybe, going to? But I don't think so. In terms of putting the MDS sheets up, was there also something, Carolyn? Are we going to have? Are we supposed to have a segregated section in the website to be able to announce when they give us announcements that they're going to be spraying? Is that something we're well, supposed to be? Well, it should be under the Board of Health. There should be, you know, a link where you say you amass her firm. Okay, so there's going to be like a link. But but are they going to have? Is it going to be a link to something they're going to put up on their so. site, or is it something they're no, going to we, alert us? No, we we actually post the, the whatever they're going to spray, so people can. Um, I don't think every that. time they're going to spray. No, 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 no. I was going to say. Whoa. You just, no, they're going to have down there. They have the box. They have a, they're they're gonna have gonna a box. box. They're going to post and something, say, and we're just going to list all the items that they do like, may, may They're going to say what they're spraying, gotcha. and then people can go to our website and look up the, the MSDS. 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 Okay, okay. they're okay. not going to okay. post. Gotcha. They're not going to post the MSDS sheet. No, right. We're going to have. We're supposed to have them all for the whole thing. Okay, so that's good to know. So maybe there's. I think if we're going to do that, we should have a way to link them up there as individual sheets so somebody can scan you know so we'll right I got it. Okay. well I just want to see what okay. we need to coordinate it so it's user friendly that's what I'm saying and, right. and so to it me, should be scanned it, individually somebody from UMass should be working with you and you shouldn't have to figure it out all yourself so, yep. All right. Sorry. Okay. Thank no, that's you. fine. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, and 3, to conduct strategies with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares. I do. So. We'll I, I Carolyn Ness. I, I Trevor McDaniel. I Henry Camosa. We will not be returning to open session. Thank you. Good Thank night. you all. Thank you.